you see nature's most savage man-eating animal. By its size alone, it can overpower and devour any human. Grizzly. 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 It is not the offspring of witchcraft or Satan. This grizzly preys on the easiest food of all, man. Over 18 feet tall, over 2,000 pounds. The largest carnivorous ground beast in the world. 18 feet of man-eating, gut-crunching terror. And it will mindlessly, mercilessly kill every living thing it meets. Prophecy. The campers come in here, they leave food around, the bears get the smell of it, and that's it. This bump's eating his victims. It was created by man. Grizzly. The deadliest jaws on land. Anyone is fair game. Yes, yes, y'all, it's going down right now. Episode 255 of the Triple Shots of Moons and Horn podcast is coming at you live and direct with the homie, JP, also known as the Mexican, Mr. Saucedo, also known as Tyler, and I'll be your host, the M-O-O-D to the Z, representing PGBC. Y'all know me, Moods. Yeah. What's going on, homies? Yeah. We're here to eat some fucking cheese in Wisconsin. Oh, yeah, with cheese and and some brats and shit. Is that what you're gonna yeah, do? Yeah, that's like really. You're in Wisconsin. They like you're putting near Jeremy. Burgers. Yep, actually, really close. It's funny, actually. Jeremy lives closer to like Milwaukee than he does to Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> it, no, like, yeah, Jeremy's for real, like for real though. For real though. Like I actually know because I've done that. It's it's hilarious that he lives closer to like the bre- where the Brewers play than he, than the Cubs. It's bizarre. <laughs> um. Yeah, man. Episode 255, Zoology Volume 4. We got bears. Killer motherfucking bears. The bears. The bears. Fuck the bears. Fuck the bears. <laughs> Dude, uh, that, that was kind of impressive. We referenced Jeremy, Chicago, and tied it into the bears, which into, is also, you know. Into Henry? A into a Henry quote? Yeah, which was the serial <laughs> killers bears. last week. I right. Mean. Well, that wow, the six degrees of 22 shots, man. Crazy. <laughs> Wow, where's Kevin Bacon when we need him, man? Fuck. <laughs> mm. Yeah, man. Fucking uh, Zoology Volume 4. We haven't done one in a little bit uh, because we've been on, well, I shouldn't say a tangent, but um, that was actually kind of funny about uh, a lot of the comments from last week, like from the uh, the 2011 show was, gotta love the fucking tangents. And it felt like old 22 shots with us fighting, tangents, talking over yeah, each that other. Was, that was one of the more intense uh, debates we've had in I, quite some time absolutely fucking knew it was going to happen because tyler felt very strongly about his opinions of megan i've always said fuck megan is missing even when it yeah when, when the movie came out back in the day i copped it and i was like what the fuck this is the worst shit i've ever seen like i was i was appalled by it like how bad the acting and shit wasn't i was like i, I didn't get why it was becoming so popular until people were like well if you're a parent you need to see this blah 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 and i'm like okay i, get I think that angle. Kid, it doesn't need to see it. it doesn't make the movie any better because it has that type of commentary well, in it it doesn't make the movie any better for myself i get what they're trying to do and yeah the ending is very disturbing but i can't get over like some of the scenes in this film are just so incredibly bad to me <laughs> i'm like i, I just, it's hard for me to watch yeah and for, and that, for somebody like dave thing. z has such like high standards when it comes to films and stuff like that he loves found footage i guess that but like mm-hmm. that type of movie to me i would never guess that he would like it considering how like you know kind of low quality it is and stuff like it just doesn't seem See, like one of the better films that he would enjoy but, like that's that's the weird thing because i think it's like pretty high quality like mm. in terms of the acting and stuff like man i don't so, know what the fu- like it's so crazy that we're so polar opposite on this like the one <laughs> scene and i mentioned this on the show too about the scene where 
uh, when the second girl goes missing and her parents are like pleading for like on the news or doing an interview like that scene right there is so it's almost so bad it's funny to watch because if you watch the mom her reaction she's like just bring her back and i'm like the emo th that's not real emotion man yeah like, i would probably gone, dude i like, couldn't remember that so i that's one where it I always stuck out to me it always stuck it out to me again. from when i very first watched it to the even this rewatch now and i was like oh my god i it, it it's just one of those scenes where it just it buried itself in my mind as being one of the worst scenes i've ever seen because you're supposed to be showing some raw emotion your child is missing probably fucking raped and dead like you should have some crazy emotion happening here none it's like the most wooden fucking oak shit ever, dude. Like they mapled the shit out of that one. But man, yeah. I don't know, dude. I, I, I used to have more charity for this movie, which is I've seen it so many times now that it just like calmed down the gun stuff I already know is there that like I think is really bad. Yeah, I mean, some of your complaints, like when you saw the boom mic and stuff, that type of shit doesn't really bother me when you're watching more independent films and stuff. Like you're going to see... um you know shit like that it's, Bro, I, I it's generally... not even but listen that that are like it's not even independent films that some of the best films of all time have yeah. shit like that in them oh 100 100 like and there I, are and I, mistakes I, that that go through and even, i generally like i'm talking about like some of the best films ever like you'll have you'll have like dude there's like hitchcock films that have stuff like that in them mm-hmm well, I always like, think of James yeah, Cameron's no, like Shadow like, or something. I think of James Cameron, you know, Terminator 2 with all of its mistakes. And that's like, you know, considered one of the best movies of all action films of all time. You know, it's got this crazy budget and it has a bunch of mess ups in the movie. And it's just, it is funny to me that that shit exists. But, you know, I mean, we're all human, right? The shit happens. The, but the like, thing is, like, long before, like, I started really, not really noticing, like, the technical issues with the movie. Um, I already mm. thought it was bad. So it's like, that, like yeah that stuff is like fun for me to dunk on like yeah. i can definitely like admit that but like that's like well if you like, already don't like the movie then it, oh it's like, easier to is, start nitpicking yeah. things that's what to i was death. trying to say to right. dave it's like dave like i know like you feel like i'd be like harsh on this music. well your argument like made a lot of sense to me tyler because i saw where you're coming from because you tried to say to dave and i understand what you're saying completely about the fact that he already likes this movie and he's not looking for things like that or he's not trying to see that type of shit it's the just the opposite of what how you're feeling right if you're going if you're not liking something you're going to notice things if you like something you're not going to notice those other things that are going to probably yeah, like if i'm down mentally your... dunking on it and i see like the second boom mic of the movie like i'm gonna laugh on it right like it just it is what it is but if you're yeah. invested in it like yeah, yeah you're not gonna see that yeah and th i mean the only thing and, and i generally never try to be super you know critical and you know and brutal about acting in indie films and stuff but this one it's like you know my biggest complaint with with found footage right is acting and that's where i'll yeah. harp on it because found footage is meant to be real it's supposed to come across know, real. and when that like, fails it, the whole movie here's fails. my thing so that was my okay. that's why I, I was so critical about the acting in this one where if it wasn't a found footage movie i probably wouldn't have been as critical maybe not with the parents seeing that is the most dreadful fucking scene in cinema history i swear to god but you know what i'm saying like if this was a regular type of film like it's set in this fictional world whatever it is but like you know what i mean i wouldn't be as critical as it at, you know on the film but then when you're dealing with found footage bro it, it doesn't work it ruins the whole experience i don't know like my thing is like look for I, me anyways like, when you I'm, talk so, I'm not talking about everybody and... i'm not generalizing when i say this though i'm talking about me personally and i've had people even tell me that they feel the same way about found footage films too it's like if the shit is just not working on the acting level and it's coming off like super I mean, and super I bad, agree with that. it doesn't that, work. That usually can, but it's not just acting. It's like character decisions. Like if I feel like characters are doing stuff that like people wouldn't do in real life, that right. breaks a found footage well, film for me. Okay. So this was one of my biggest complaints. I know we talked about this years ago on the show too. And I, I always, you know, always talked about the acting and stuff, how it needs to be pristine to make this thing work and stuff. But you're right though. Like in, in real, real life, when shit starts going down what's the last thing on your mind in these situations like recording but at the same it's time, recording I, the fucking I situations fixed, fuck that i'd be running away no no i fix that for myself because and here's why because look at any world war ii or or vietnam footage there are journalists there who are literally tr in like putting their lives in, in well danger that's also their job to though, too right yeah right I mean, but that that's typically in found footage films it's people who want to capture the footage so it's like you okay. know 
Okay, that's fair enough. So that's how I've explained it for myself. It just justify it. You can make it work in certain scenarios. Sometimes, like they don't work. Like I think I agree. Sometimes it doesn't work. Yeah, like I think like in this movie in particular, just the way like the kids interact with technology in general was something that like stuck out to me. Like when they're all video chatting and like nobody's doing anything like in a tab or anything. Like I could go. I don't want to get into it. Like I could like I could go on like with stuff like that. But like for example, like in movies where people seem like they're like aimlessly running with like the camera, like a wicked easy way to like just make that of like the correct decision is for that to be your light source, where like they have the camera light on. Yeah, because, that's like, actually see. a good right. point. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I think I think we've set our piece on <laughs> Megan is missing. I can't believe that got brought up again. Oh, fuck, man. I wanted yeah. to talk about this. I wanted to talk about this. This is really fucking strange. Uh, so actually, this is really beyond talking about uh, tangents and, you know, six degrees of fucking 22 shots. Here's another six degrees. Um, so last week when we were doing Ser- Serial Killers Volume 2, uh, Dahmer, if you haven't checked it out, check it out. Uh, shameless plug. Um, so JP, you'd mentioned something about um, like how well no i i I read about it about how when one of the the screen was based on um like an actual event that happened right yeah so and then i mentioned the post scream murders so get this man this is so fucking random so you guys we always talk about how we love our true crime and stuff and i wa- i record and watch dateline every weekend right like i, mm-hmm. I record it on friday nights and and i fucking usually watch it saturday mornings when i get up well I didn't watch it. This one was actually a couple weeks old. It's actually kind of funny because this one was sitting in my PVR for a couple weeks. So if I had watched it, I would have been talking about this on last show. What's a PVR? Just your box. The the PVR. Thing. That's just what that what, what, what does that it. stand for? Uh, video. Dra- I don't know. Fucking. I don't know. We call it PVR. <laughs> yeah, well, ours is DVR. That's why I was curious. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. Anyways. Um, so I clicked on fucking uh, Dateline this morning and uh, got up really early and I clicked on Dateline and it was about these two high school kids that killed one of their friends based on the Scream movie. Yeah. <laughs> no fucking shit. That's nope. that's the case. That's the Dateline. And I couldn't fucking believe it. right away. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. They're, this is actually on right now. I was like, JP was just talking about this shit, man. They literally say they, they filmed it. And like in like they're, they're, they're talking about like how the original idea came from like, Hey, have you ever thought about like actually going through with this and stuff? And they based it on the, the experience they had with watching scream and shit. And I was like, this is fucking nuts, dude. Like I, I watched this shit and I was just like, so blown away that they just like, they literally made like a kill list and stuff. And they, you know, the craziest thing about the whole situation though, for myself was that they were hanging out with her and her boyfriend, these two guys right they sat around and watched a movie with them Uh and they had snacks they 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 left and actually during so it was all fucking calculated so during this whole thing that she was actually house sitting for you know some people whatever it was yeah for aunt and i guess during like sometime tonight one of the kids went downstairs unlocked the back back door anyways they left after like you know 9 30 night said they were going to the the movies but they obviously were just circling around and you know um, but her boyfriend was supposed to stay there and he ended up going home and he was actually on the kill list. They originally had planned yep. to kill him and her, but he went home, which obviously saved his life. And mm-hmm. they fucking, they killed her. And I'm like, and I'm thinking to myself, I literally did, had, did they show watching. any of the footage of them yeah, talking they, about they it showed afterwards? It all. They showed it all. He's like, Oh my God, I just killed Cassie. Yeah. I stabbed her so many times. Yeah. And it's crazy. <laughs> like they even mentioned like, yeah, we just, we fucking, we're like, we're these maniacs. We're going around fucking killing people and like, just like scream. And I'm like, Oh my God. I mean, Blame if the authority, if people get a, get, you know, get a wind of this, because, I mean, horror films have always been criticized as being like the influencers possibly of certain things and stuff. And oh, like, yeah, that and like, like music, like their end result was like, they made up a huge kill list and they eventually wanted to top it off with like, like a Columbine type style shooting and stuff. And I was like, oh my God, like, yeah. I'm so glad that they didn't plan this murder <laughs> very well and shit. And like. Yeah, but, they got busted pretty fucking easy, bro. Yeah, they 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 were stupid about the whole thing. I mean, honestly, they fucked up so many times there. But anyways, yeah. But the point is, I was I was just blown away that these guys literally were talking about how they base this shit off the movie Scream, and I was like, oh my god, like this is how the video nasties happened in the early '80s and shit. It was yeah, like, right. And, he, and like, yeah, and you know, like the exactly. whole 
the whole Satan thing in the eighties and shit, like p the wrong people get wind of this shit and it blow satanic panic and the wrong people get a hold of this information. Like, oh, and they start blaming everything and everything just goes fucking haywire. And I'm like, oh my God, Scream is going to be banned now. So anyways, that was a yeah, trippy dude. thing to happen to me. That was, super, yeah, super that is trippy, trippy but isn't that case super interesting? Yeah, dude, I was, I, I was actually very sick to my stomach watching it because I was like, oh my God, these people actually exist. Yeah. And also Gary. like, like the like I, I mean i'm not sure how much they showed but i've watched like very long things on it yeah and like there's a lot of footage of them just in high school like like recording that cassie like hey cassie yeah and like it's just eerie knowing that like oh they're about to kill you in a week so they did you show the I mean? clip the day of the murder they actually show a clip of them walking up to her locker and she's at her locker putting in her books yeah and yeah. and they're like hey cassie you're on camera and she's like hi and then they it was just like everyday conversation and then they fucking stabbed her up like that night yeah i'm like this she's is like so scary. she seemed like such a like good like you know dude she was girl. like a per she like, was like a, a perfect a, student like she had yeah great, like she marks. seemed like she was gonna have like a, a great life ahead of her it's yeah like, fucking waste what a fucking waste yeah and these guys were 16 and they got life without possibility of pro so they're li they, they've already been in jail oh, wow. for like half their life i think it was this was like 15 16 years ago that this yeah. happened so they've literally spent half their life in prison already and they're only in their 30s early yeah, 30s. Well, I'm gonna go. and you know what the crazy part about the whole thing was i didn't realize th this usually doesn't happen very often in um like when you get sentenced and stuff but both of those guys are actually in the same jail and uh yeah, they that see is kind of weird they yeah, see each other every single weird. i guess they haven't talked since the trial they haven't said a word to each other and like the whole time they've been in jail because one of the guys um not the blonde hair guy but the dark hair dude he actually did a a recent interview with um yeah, one of the guys from dateline that. Yep. and and he talked about like because he asked him he's like you know like why did you do this and like man at the time like we just felt like we were nobody we needed to do some shit and stuff and he's like i regret it every day and stuff i mean honestly of course you regret it because you're you're gonna rot in jail the rest of your life but right you know, yeah. I mean, it, it's scary. It's still interesting to hear his thoughts, but he did mention that he sees him. He sees his, you know, his old partner every day, and he never. They don't talk and stuff. I'm like, that's a really weird thing that they're even in the yeah. same prison. But yeah, thought that was that is true. pretty weird, man. Because normally that yeah. does not happen. You're right. no, you totally so. Hmm. Yeah, well, that um, yeah, that, that shit's crazy though, bro. Yeah, dude, that, it's always I, interesting to peek to someone's brain and just like get so yeah. deluded by something like that. You well, know, it's always interesting when there's footage of these people like yeah. talking about their murder, right? Because you just didn't yeah. have that before. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, man, it's fucking. Oh, man. I'm just like so appalled by. It. I just couldn't believe it though. Like this shit was actually on me watching this morning. Because sometimes, yeah, like how, when we go into the shows, random is that? <laughs> sometimes when we go into the shows, like I'm like, what are we going to talk about in the intros? I mean, we usually don't have any problems bringing up shit because you know we tangent right. left and right and stuff. But I was like, wow, that's a perfect thing to bring up because that is really random. <laughs> so yeah, dude. Um, but yeah, like, but it's very, very disgusting, very disgusting. And I felt so fucking bad for her family. And then her mom died like a couple years ago from cancer. I was like, oh my god. Uh, just brutal man like she was only like in her mid 50s i was like man that sucks man that's terrible so yeah well dude honestly and and another thing because in that um in some of the footage of them talking like dylan claybold and uh eric harris are like they're like idols too yeah you know, and so like up. that the honestly the columbine people that the, the kids from columbine they really did influence a lot of fucking future like garbage because well you know i don't want to be the person but i've said this many many times before and i'm like man i always hate when people are like oh yeah you know this movie influenced somebody to do this or this music you know influenced somebody to do this like i'm not a big fan of supporting that because people i think are just kind of crazy and a, yeah a little well bit crazy. influence is one thing like cause versus influence right. is different because you can be influenced by anything to right, to, right to do anything that doesn't mean that you wouldn't have found another influence to do it you mm -hmm. know just but you know i think that like the whole like i don't think anything causes anyone else to do anything but influence for sure like you know inspire people yeah. uh but that doesn't mean that the thing that inspires them shouldn't exist I just find it different. I, I find it so fascinating because last week we, we talked about Dahmer and like how we were very infatuated with the Dahmer story because it's so interesting. I think there's a lot of different ways to look at it and stuff. And he, he's just a very intriguing person. Um, but like, 
you know, it's different to like, you know, look at a case and and study it and stuff and be infatuated with it. But to be like, you know, looking up to that person or even, okay, so who the fuck was that dude on our Facebook page who was getting all the real life serial killers tattooed on him? And people were like, dude, that's not fucking cool, man. Oh, that's that Corey dude. I'm like, but like that's oh, that he like John Wayne Gacy on his See, it's like taking it too far. Like yeah. I, I, I think Dude, I would never shit, get his actual serial. That's, what, I I took that's what I'm saying. Where do you draw the line? Where, where, where do you draw the line? Like, Who this tattoo I got? Yeah, like where do you draw the line? Like I mean, I mean, I have horror well, shit all over my house and stuff, but it's fictional. It's fictional. Like I'm not going out of my way and getting Dahmer and Gacy and fucking Bundy or tattooed on me. Like, it's especially it really does say a lot about unless you're asking for attention. I don't know. Especially ones that were pedophiles, right? Because that to me is like the worst. It's worse. And yeah. Yeah. So and like Gacy was a pedophile. Dahmer mm-hmm. kind of was a pedophile. Well, he technically bit. was at one because yeah. he got yeah. Bundy Bun one of Bundy's victims was like twelve. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. So, you know, like the maybe the only one that is reasonable is like ed gain because he only killed like two people and he mainly just like fucking stole bodies <laughs> right yeah but, yeah no i would never get a like an actual murderer tattooed on me like fictional murderers are fine like jason or something yeah because you know it's I mean? make-believe it's it's yeah it's, fu- it's fun it's fucking yeah. fictional man it's totally different make believe yeah yeah totally like i mean yeah i i just think that's really an interesting conversation because like i couldn't believe it dude i would like this guy was i even said to somebody i was like man is this just like an attention grabber or is he like really fucking proud of this shit because like i would be <laughs> i would never do something like that that's so like that's embarrassing i mean yeah, to me dude. getting like dahmer tattooed on you is like you might as well just put a fucking swastika on you man like it's just despicable <laughs> right? like, like i'm not gonna I, I get Hitler tattooed on me. Tattooed on me no man. that's what i'm saying like who the fuck is going out of their way to get like napoleon fucking tattooed on their neck like it's fucked up, man. Like, it, see how silly that sounds? Like, who the fuck would do that? But I'm sure there's people right. out there. I mean, yeah, it, it's really, it's really strange. But whatever. So, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I have a hundred hours of tattooing on me, and I won't even like get a tattoo I can't cover up, and that's just any tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, tattooing is like you know it, it's usually an expression of your personality and like who you are and stuff like that like i mean the only tattoos i have in my body is like horror related and hip-hop related like one yeah, side yeah. of my body is all horror and the other side's all hip and that's what i generally do with my yeah, whole life is music like. and movies right yeah. so it's an yeah. expression of who i am and like i like these these fictional characters i like these real groups and, and mcs and stuff it's just who i am like i you know i don't go out of my way to impress anybody because i don't care if you don't like pete rock it doesn't bother me Right, like I mean, I just couldn't imagine looking at somebody with fucking serial. Like, take that serious, man. I don't know. Different strokes for different folks, I guess, man. But damn, yeah, all my tattoos are movies and Yu Gi Oh. Yeah, I mean, it's it's all yeah. Personal. That's that's like kind of what I would get is like horror stuff or music stuff. I mean, there was a time period where you know, remember when the tramp snap became like a super popular thing and every girl dude yeah know, i just remember random, they were getting they would go to the tattoo shop i like them look through the book <laughs> and, they, and they would just pick, they would just like oh i like that flower or i want that arrow down to my butthole or something like that I'm yeah like, what the, fuck? the tribal like, the tribal was the big one oh but that, the be, tribal, that yeah. became like a huge fad and like i'm thinking yeah. of myself with these women i'm like did you really want that or you just wanted to have a tattoo there because if you're just going there and picking something out of the book it's not really that personal to you is it right you know what i mean i don't know i just i look at tattooing a lot differently that's why yeah i just find it that's so kind strange. of a 90s thing like or like yeah, early 2000s when early i was in 2000s. high school the new trend for girls was like the, was on the hip bone like just below the pant line yeah 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 fuck anyways <laughs> great conversation <laughs> ah, shit. shit anyway i freaking was sick all freaking week man yeah that sucks brutal it's been i'm getting over it now i think but i was in like a stupor of nyquil and like just out of it like all week so (laughs) everything's like a blur from this week well at least you didn't lose your voice because when i was sick a couple weeks ago man like i had completely lost my voice and that happens to me a lot actually i feel like my voice is a little it's 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 definitely compromised but it's not like overly shitty you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's not like you know, like coughing and scratching. Yeah, I might not, not even notice unless you said something. Yeah, but yeah, 
Uh, you know what I fucking realized this week? And this is so random, but I can't fucking stand when people open up chip bags upside down. It drives me <laughs> what the nuts. Fuck? I don't I don't know why I just I just popped in my head because I saw this guy and he was eating and his chip bag was open up. It was upside down. Like he opened it from the bottom. And I'm like, why would you do that? Like it's I don't know, it's just my mentality. It's fucking pet peeves. There's certain things that just drive me nuts, man. I, I couldn't look at it. I'm like, why <laughs> would you open it up upside down? Yeah, that's pretty weird, huh? It's so yeah, strange. It's really peculiar. I mean, the only thing I could think of is like, if I open it from the bottom, that means all the flavoring is going to be on the top chips. Maybe there's, maybe there's some madness to this. I don't know. That was the only thing I could come up with. Like I spent a lot of time thinking to myself because all I do is walk around all day by myself and deliver mail. So I'm listening to tunes. And I think about shit and I just happened to see this guy eating chips. And I was like, Oh my God, that's, that, that bug, that's bugging the shit out of me. <laughs> it's like, I can't handle it, man. I, I am weird like that, man. I got a lot of really strange pet peeves, but I don't dwell on them. I just find them kind of quirky and weird, very eccentric sometimes. Anyways. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Anyways, what did you guys think of the new vinegar syndrome titles? I thought they were good. I was surprised so many people were complaining, dude. So many people were complaining like complaining about oh the package oh, right yeah no just like with the titles that were they released like yeah like people I are mean, mad like they're like man vinegar syndrome is really going downhill and stuff and i'm like dude it feels the same as it ever has been to me i was i was like i mean maybe it's just a me thing but i was like really fucking excited for singapore slang like that that was just, that was a big title for me i thought i, I actually heard that i feel like i knew Sing singapore sling was coming I don't know it why. We, yeah, it got leaked because I forever I thought it was. Um, I assumed like inevitably it was going to get a criteria release because it's streamed on the channel multiple times and it does kind of just fit in that weird mold. But then, like yeah. I think, like in December I, or maybe January, I saw it confirmed where that vinegar syndrome was pointed out, and I was like, "All right, all right, I'll take that for sure." I mean, I don't really have a problem with these. Like, Singapore Sling is an interesting film. Um, I've never seen Spectres, but I've seen Maya before. Um, yeah, a lot of people were excited about Maya as like a potential title, so I figured that was like at least like a good release. And like, yeah, um, I haven't the, seen either of those either. I don't know what Spectres is actually. I'm like, that's not even like my. Are like, they both general. Italian? I'm assuming Spectres is actually. Uh, like to the put Peter those Cushing together. anthology, like that's not even like normally my bag, but like that looks cool, and like it's got a bunch of awesome people in it. And like after like looking it up a little bit, it seems to be like that was like a pretty good release. Oh yeah, so what it is, yeah. it's uh it's the same director. Marcelo Avalone. So I don't know much about Spectres. I'm trying to place it, but like Donald Pleasance. Yeah, I've I mean I've seen Maya before, so yeah, that's interesting. Double Bill Italian. What was the other one I was thinking? Singapore sling that one. Oh yeah, Story of a Junkie. I mean, it's it's not gonna be for everybody. Is that a, you said that's a documentary? Yeah. Yeah, it was actually originally released by Troma. So here's another Troma release um, DVD years and years ago. I've had that DVD for fucking ever. And it, it literally is a story of a fucking heroin addict and shit. It's pretty nasty, actually, to be honest. Um, yeah, that's like, um, there's a v v Lucifer Valentine. Thing, yeah, like yeah. That. I never watched that one. I, I've i seen this and I was like, I'm not watching I've it. seen the Lucifer one. It's pretty yeah. gross. Yeah, I've heard it's pretty fucking nasty. So yeah, I'm like, I'm not saying never. But I'm not touching that guy's movies. <laughs> um, yeah, and then the movie Going Black South. That's about it. I know of this movie because it was directed by That's a Jack, Jack Nicholson. Nicholson movie. Yeah, and it's got a crazy oh, cast, South? dude. Like, it's got a crazy cast. Like, Jack Nicholson, fucking Christopher Lloyd, Danny DeVito's in it, Lynn Shay, John Belushi. Like, Jeez, John Belushi. It's, it's crazy. Mary, Mary Steen Steenburgen. That is a good cast. Yeah, Veronica Cartwright. Like, there's this whole fucking... It's yeah, crazy. Veronica Cartwright, too. I saw that, too. Damn. Yeah, Ed Begley like, Jr.'s movie. in it. Yeah. Ed Begley Jr. Like, it's a crazy fucking... Like, everybody's notable in this film. Um, But I think it says it's a comedy. I actually don't know anything about this movie, really. Did it, you pick one, it up? I bought the whole package, right? So yeah um and then uh, of course dr terror's house of horrors which is cool because that's never actually had a stateside um no it did, did have a release it was released by olive right is that olive i have that movie yeah yeah I okay think. i have i have that too actually all okay so yeah coming to 4k um dr terror's house of horrors which is an <laughs> anthology film of course um 
which i enjoy i think it's actually really is good that, is that what we're doing for the feature yeah 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 so i think this was the f- it was one of the early amicuses anyways but uh yeah i know it's fun so uh, yeah i think that's going to be the feature review for uh simbin episode three oh, i still what? haven't even like i still haven't even that's uh, episode four bro oh episode four yeah uh, right right because we haven't even done three yeah right because we're yeah. getting ahead of ourselves here <laughs> you way I ahead <laughs> i don't even yeah so um yeah as for the partner lead were, were people tripping about the part of it's man the problem is that the part labels for myself right now is that there's so many new labels that are just releasing like more modern stuff so i really only picked up like the last Lump- slumber party uh because it's uh ag um egg well, sorry i'm fucking trying to not burp um and yeah, then saturn's core that one and the severe Saturn's injuries core so, title. i don't i don't really buy the partner label stuff at all like mm-hmm. i maybe have like 10 releases probably oh, maybe, maybe 15. Label stuff. yeah a lot of the new titles were like just you know a lot of modern stuff and i'm just i'm not really gonna go out of my way to buy you know spend this type of money on modern films that i'm that blind buying them and stuff like with last slumber party like i have the old dvd of that and stuff it's it is what it is man but I collect yeah, those I don't really I, buy I, modern titles. No, I collect those I, two I, labels. So I'm like, fuck, I'm, I'm gonna buy those, right? I love Saturn's core, so it's severe. It, it looks interesting. Yeah, I really like that Death Crocodile line. Is yeah. that only animated movies? No, they're like kind of like just they're they're like world cinema, like with focus on like an animation and like LGBTQ movies, but like non-American animation is something that like really focuses on me because like I think a disconnect that like a lot of people have which is animation is in America it's like almost it's primarily pretty much for kids whereas like in other parts of the world it's a more respected art form and there's more adult content in animation so like I getting, love like, I love adult animated stuff like I'm a massive fan of Fritz the Cat and like um isn't I, like isn't Coonskin one yeah um, I've seen that one that's, that's 75 like, like, I think other, right like and that's the same guy that's Rolf Bakshi yeah that's i think that's 75 too yeah there, i mean there's a, there's a bunch of american um like an, like adult animated stuff yeah but, I mean, yeah, yeah, but yeah, not anymore right? i mean kind of i guess but yeah it, well, I, I like call, fire nice like fire nice like is really a really big fan of like anime the last like couple of years because of just like you can there's a lot of things that you can like achieve in the medium that you can't with live action especially and like when you're making right. like just like not even like stuff that's like inappropriate for kids but just like stuff like kids wouldn't understand like on an intellectual level it's really cool you know it's funny i was actually searching around on on amazon today i was just kind of waiting for the for us to record and stuff and i came across like randomly i don't even know how it came up but like the unicorn wars blu-ray came up i was like oh shit so when that fucking <laughs> that God was, was talking about shit. and i'm like you know I, I i'm a big fan of like the adult uh animation too so i was like man it does look actually pretty fucking cool blu-ray is actually pretty cheap too so i was like shit I should pick that up. Yeah, no, I actually ended up watching that um because of Tyler's recommendation. Did you like it? Yeah, yeah, and it was fun. It was cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's was, it's was like it's like very like like if the first like little bit of it, you're like, what the fuck am I watching, bro? <laughs> and then like randomly, they just like have the close up of the bear dick, and you're like, what yeah, the fuck? <laughs> it's just like Care Bears mixed with like Full Metal Jacket, and it's just fucking. Uh, Matt, it's like nuts. <laughs> yeah, it sounds interesting. That's cool. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I mean, yeah, I was. I, I think I was more disappointed in just the the partner label re- releases this month for myself. I only grabbed two, so although a couple, like I mean, Karate Contra Mafia, that that one sound, that one looked okay. <laughs> I didn't grab it though, but but yeah, a lot of modern stuff. I wasn't like overly excited for I, yeah, I don't think i grabbed any new partner releases this month probably just um, gonna i just grab, one see i try to buy the ones that you guys are going to reveal just because i kind of want to have the option to watch them yeah yeah because with tony's doing the last slumber party right yeah yes. i think so so i'll probably end up doing like severe injuries because that's really yeah i think that was like the only thing yeah and speaking of that guys i'm sick of fucking picking last dude you, you're not listen i don't i've never got 
I'm always third. So it's like, oh, yeah, uh, y'all are on that. Like, sh- I didn't dude, even know they got the announced. They're like, oh man, what about the new phone? Dude, they tell Someone's me like, every time when they're going to announce, it's like noon on the first. I know, but like, I just, I don't, I was at work and I was like, holy fucking. And like, I actually was waiting for my cab to take me to my spot. And then I was like, oh shit. So I was like looking it up. I'm like, okay, cool. But no, but like, I got your guys' message <laughs> and it was like, hey, go, uh, what movie are you going to review moods? And I'm like, what the fuck? And I, I've read your guys' picks and I'm like, there's nothing left. <laughs> what one of my two choices anyway? Oh my well, God. my thing is like, I like to pick the stuff that like, I don't know. I've been floating around. Like the first time I picked um, uh, the a VSA, the second time I picked the, uh, the cinematography line. Yeah. And then, then I did a VSA again. And then now I'm back to via uh, regular one um oh. but i don't know i just like i like rotate like trying to do like something different but uh, honestly the italian double feature i should have left for you because that's kind of your thing but yeah. i wasn't well, really super I, can, I could call it the italian releases. stallion again <laughs> right <laughs> remember i used to do italian stallion tyler yeah. i don't know if you noticed on this month's but the the partner label stuff the canadian um the cip the canadian international pictures they got the animation night in canada <laughs> volume one. Oh yeah i saw that yeah i was, I was like oh shit i was like what the fuck is it? i've never seen too much uh canadian animated stuff so i don't know what it is like a, probably a collection of like shorter films oh it, it totally is now that i look at yeah, it yeah i think it is oh it's like a ton there's like 15 on here but they're like nine ten eight yeah so it kind of adds up but I think a yeah. bunch of I just grabbed crazy a couple shit. more a couple more animated films from that Def Rock line. I'm just trying to like Yeah. Like wow. between them and in film movement, I kind of want like basically all their movies, so I'm kind of just like grabbing one or two a month. Wow, it's crazy, man. These are spanning from 1965 to 1985. So these are That's all cool. relatively older animated type. So it's cool, man, because it plays into like, you know, the type of animation that I like, you know, like I'm a big fan of like 60s, 70s, and 80s animation yeah right like it started to change in the 90s but like all my like favorite cartoons from like 60s 70s they all look very very similar you know what animation i'm talking about but uh um, have have you guys have any of you guys dump, jumped into that last pi- lost picture show box that ever no but i really want to do something with that because it just seems like such a fun thing to go through and watch yeah. and like yeah i know um not yeah. yet but there's a lot of content in that thing that's a does fucking it does everybody piece. own do you own that tyler um I'm oh, sorry, say that again? The Lost Picture Show set? I don't have that as well. Oh, okay. I was going to say we could probably factor that into the show somehow. Yeah, Whatever we put- want to <clears throat> pick it up. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, to like run through a box that like have a segment where we we where we just kind of run through it. <clears throat> yeah. Like, yeah. That would be pretty cool that to would do. That would kind of be cool. Um, yeah, because no, I haven't dipped into it yet either. Yeah, it looks really bizarre. It, like I was reading on some of the films, I'm like, man, these things are like all over the fucking place, dude. It's crazy. It should be pretty interesting, though. Yeah. So, um, but I mean, I guess that's what the show is all about. Here we are talking about Sinbin, because um, <laughs> I mean, you know, with the monthly packages, like there's so many different types of films, so you're getting flavors from all angles, like genre yeah. films and stuff. So why not dig into something like that that's even more bizarre? But uh, <clears throat> yeah, and now that like, n- like this is this is the first year I did the subscriber thing. And like, I got to say, man, I'm pretty damn, I, I got it paid off. Right. So pretty much everything that gets released under the vinegar syndrome line, I automatically get, which has made, you know, the two or three titles that I'm picking up outside of that extreme feel extremely cheap because not only am I getting like $10 off eight to $10 off per title, mm-hmm. like the, what did I get? I picked up the, I think there was like three or four four titles that i picked up this time mm-hmm. and it it was like you know pretty cheap and i even got like a hoodie because i was like a hoodie and a book which by the, also there i didn't even realize they released books so i missed out on all these cool books like wishmaster novelization and stuff yeah, yeah. like why did it, i feel like they didn't promote that shit yeah i know i started it was a probably a couple years back like i just started like I always go to the website and just click on the new package deal or whatever. And I kind of go through that and, you know, part and label stuff. But then I started scrolling down and I noticed that they were releasing like a ton of other stuff too. And I was like, Oh shit, crazy. Cause like, I mean, they got like records, like there's a whole pile of shit. So, yeah. Um, I, I didn't like notice the, the hoodies yeah, though. I like, like the, I, I, so cause I know they got the vinegar syndrome stuff, but like, what did you pick up? It was a, I grabbed a hoodie. 
Um, no, but what one was it again? It was the. It, it has just the it, on the back. It has the the classic vinegar syndrome like girl logo with the the leg. Oh, okay. you know, that's with, cool. And, but it's like it's red or it's like red. It looks like blood, and then right. it says vinegar syndrome <laughs> along the side, and then there's like a film rail on the front of the zip. Ho- oh zip yeah, yeah, hoodie. yeah. I know that one. Okay, yeah, and that's then, cool. Uh, I picked up um, that. I finally picked up that that. Uh, uh, Amanda Reyes book, the TV movie book. Yeah. That I've been wanting. Oh forever. yeah. I remember we were talking about that. That's cool. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's cool, yeah. man. Yeah, I know. I mean, <laughs> they just have so much stuff on there. I mean, you could literally just give him your fucking paycheck. <laughs> tell him to send it's, you some shit like every month. Yeah, it's, dude, it's crazy. It's, it's crazy. It's, yeah. I mean, I have to like not buy a lot of stuff that I want because it's just too much. Right. Um, but like, especially like, I, like I would love to have picked up all the VHSs they did for the the Dazager label or whatever. But yeah, you know, I have to limit myself. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> totally, man. Because yeah. I mean, that shit. Just I think I'm definitely gonna sub next year. It seems worth it with like how much I've been buying. Hmm. Yeah, I think so. And and honestly, like if like like you said, if you're gonna do um you know you might sell stuff that you don't want right yeah yeah um, right so it would probably like, definitely also, be worth it i think it. like well again to the spins where i'd be more inclined to keep up to keep stuff that they got sent to me that i normally wouldn't buy right yeah for sure sweet yeah, man, um like, <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry i gotta clear my throat <clears> throat> um yeah anyways uh episode 255 zoology episode what is four this is the fourth one right yeah yeah volume four killer bears so as per usual i did a quick little google search looking for the top 10 or 10 killer bear films and surprisingly there actually was a lot of lists um but i did i clicked on fangoria it's so stupid how they did their list um so we're gonna be so this is 10 killer bear films yeah it says the 10 scary bear movies that'll make you fear the great outdoors more okay if you want (laughs) to if you want to fear the great outdoors watch these movies i guess um here i'll start at the bottom actually because like and it's so stupid it starts at number 11 because they're right up in the in the top is like number one that's not a movie so for yeah. fucking so stupid <laughs> number 11 uh which is a movie called unnatural also known as man eater uh i guess it's like a killer polar bear film um polar bear damn that, i didn't even know cool. about that one. yeah that's what i'm saying it doesn't what have, year is that from it doesn't say and that's what's bugging me i was just about to say it, it doesn't have the years on here um so i don't know i'm assuming it's from the 2000s something because they're talking about cg and stuff like that so but anyways 2015. yeah 2015 okay Oh wow, that's actually really current. It's on Tubi if you want to watch it. Oh, probably garbage. <laughs> <laughs> um, number, I guess you all just say the number. Number ten, uh, into the grizzly maze. Um, I hear that one's pretty good. I've never act- seen it myself. Actually, I didn't mind this one. It's got a, it's got an interesting cast. It's got like Thomas Jane in it, Billy Bob Thornton's in the movie, Scott Glenn. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's really strange, like that these guys did this movie, but it, it was, it was decent from what I remember. So, um. Number nine, uh, which says backcountry. Uh, yeah, Canadian. I've seen that one. That yeah, it's, all right. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's it's a little bit different. It's about I think uh, what a couple they get lost in the forest or some shit. And they yeah, end up getting I think hunted. Scream Factory released that one. Yeah, they did. And oh, it's like a IFC yeah, films yeah, or something. Yeah, backcountry. It's yeah, basically a grizzly is hunting them, which is you know it's actually based on um, like real events and stuff. Which you know I mean obviously the events that you see in the film are probably a little bit more fictionalized, but the the idea is there. They this couple that was stalked and hunted by a grizzly which is actually quite common around here i live with grizzlies yeah i remember like years ago i knew about this movie but i never like picked it up but i like that was like when i was having like collecting screen factors i've never seen it but i remember like one day like walking to my living room my dad was like watching it on tv he's like, these really fucking rules <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a scary premise man like being hunted like it's crazy uh number eight is uh grizzly park what year is this one from uh, I feel like that one's like 2018 or something. Yeah, that was pretty new, right? More teens meet the business end of a bear claw in this obscure dark comedy. What the fuck? 
Uh, okay, interesting. Don't know anything about that one, really. Um, number seven says Yellow Fangs. Also known as Remains, Beautiful Heroes, this 1990 Japanese film is loosely based on a historical bear attack in uh, Hokkaido settlement uh, in 1915. Uh, Yushi Brown, Bear Killer. Okay, wow. So it's based on like a really old story. Sonny Chiba directed it. What the hell? Wow. Sonny Chiba directed a fucking killer. Wow, that is so <laughs> He's directed three movies. Yeah, and special advisor cool. Kinji Fukusuku. Fukusaku. That's crazy. The guy that did uh, Battle Royale. That's fucking crazy. Wow. I might have yeah, to see that one. That's nuts. <laughs> that's, a, that's a crazy cast behind a random fucking 1990 bear film wow crazy okay uh number six is the edge i've i've known about this one i've never seen this before you've never seen the edge no i don't think no, I, I, I've that's kind of crazy bro i'm trying to remember like al baldwin anthony Hopkins. i don't know if i have or not it it's just a doesn't great bring mo- it's actually a great movie it's like more of like a straight like survival type thing you know what i mean it's not right. really a horror film definitely has more survival element yeah but like it's uh it's pretty good yeah, yeah, I've never seen this from Blockbuster when I was younger. Yeah, I, I on if I have seen it, I can't place it right now. It just doesn't ring a bell. It's weird. Um, number five is Berserker. <laughs> what a fucking that's such a funny thing. Um, it's not really a killer bear film. I think it's a dude dressed up like a fucking bear. It's a slasher film from '87. Uh, actually, <laughs> Vinegar Syndrome actually released this, um, which it never had a release over on uh, stateside. So that was kind of one of those cool titles that they released. It's a bizarre one. Uh, number four is Claws. <laughs> really? <laughs> Which we will be talking about here in a minute. So we'll get into that one from 1977. Uh, number three is Prophecy uh, from 79. Uh, we'll be talking about that one. Number two is Grizzly. You got to be fucking. <laughs> <with it>. Okay. <laughs> and I guess that's the number one because that's just the way they did it. So yeah. So Grizzly. Wait, weird. Grizzly prophecy and claws. No, the revenant. <laughs> yeah, no revenant. I've never yeah. seen the revenant actually. Neither have I because everyone that like I ever talked to about that scene says it's not that good. But I mean, it's got a yeah. pretty respectable director and one, one best picture. It can't be that bad. I bet there's other <laughs> that have revenant on it for sure. Yeah, there's like a bunch of. I don't know. I mean, it, there's actually more killer bear films out there than I honestly realize because there's some on this other list that i don't think are yeah they're all different from crazy weird oh yeah totally okay so here's another list i'll just rip through it really quickly this is from like cbr uh number 10 is grizzly number nine is grizzly rage number eight is the edge uh number seven backcountry number six is grizzly park five unnatural number four is annihilation Okay. Uh, it's not really number, a killer bear movie. All right. The number three is The Revenant, right? Um, number two is Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. <laughs> that's Dude, fucking hilarious. That's kind of funny. <laughs> that is actually really funny. And number one is Cocaine Bear. Totally. Right? Like, oh, that's so current. Cocaine Bear was awesome. I yeah, enjoyed cocaine that one bear quite a bit. Me and the wife pissed ourselves laughing at a couple parts. We went to the theater and saw it and we were just dying, man. That fucking old lady. <laughs> Yeah, plus some, uh, good funny part, O'Shea right? Jackson was pretty fun. Was that his name? Ice yeah. Cube's son? No, yeah. O'Shea's his dad, Ice Cube. Oh, no, or, or yeah, he is a junior. Son. Is he a junior? junior? I thought he was a junior. Okay, I'm so sure. he might not be. I don't know. <laughs> I know yeah. But he was good in it. He was fun. I thought it was like, right. why is Ice Cube's kid's name? Why is Ice Cube's kid's name O'Shea? Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, there's a lot more kill, killer bear movies. It's a fucking weird subgenre, but um yeah but yeah no cocaine bear was funny as hell dude like that thing was so like it, man you know you knew like right when that one came out that it was just gonna spawn like four thousand replicas of like different animals with like like what were some of the movies like oh like meth fucking like turtles and i don't know man there was like <laughs> there was fucking tons of them it's pretty funny so um yeah but uh you guys got anything else um, I don't think so. No. No. Okay. No cool. Grizzly Man from Warner Herzog. I don't know that no. one. 
that's a, a, a I'm trolling. That's a documentary about like he follows this guy that like lives in a national park, like and like protects grizzly bears. It's it's not a horror movie. It's like a documentary, right? But it's got big scary bears in it. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, okay, so yeah, that's going to conclude the intro. We'll be back here with uh, some killer bear action. Yeah. Wow. Yo, who this? Yo, Moods, it's your boy, the ill-mented funky child, calling you to remind you that the featured reviews on this episode contain spoilers. Aw, oh, yeah, man, that's right, brother. Thanks for the heads up, player. Now go back to being an unproductive asshole. Fuck you. I tell your listeners to stop being so dumb, silly, sensitive. Yeah. And now, our feature presentation. All right, so getting into the featured reviews here on episode 255, Zoology Volume 4, Killer Bears. We're going to start in 1976 uh, with a film called Grizzly. Strictly called Grizzly. Um, Grizzly. I don't think Grizzly made anybody's top 10, right? Of 76. I don't think so. No, I don't. Uh, maybe someone, maybe it was on one list. I have no idea. No idea. I don't think so. Hmm. Um, Dude, you guys hear this dog? Is that you or me? What? No, it's me. What? There's some dog like barking like crazy. You guys can't hear it? No. I don't hear it. All right. If you guys can't hear it. I was like, what the fuck? Okay. Anyways. Um, Yeah. Quick little synopsis here on Grizzly. Uh, An 18 foot tall grizzly bear terrorizes 18 foot that That's thing's what, supposed to be 18 that foot thing was not 18 feet tall there's no way that was fucking 18 <laughs> foot bro no it's ridiculous terrorizes the state park leaving it 18 up to the- foot did they say that in the movie no it, it, this this thing is totally wrong i swear <laughs> i was gonna i was gonna say uh leaving it up to a state uh to a dude, park ranger to how save hot the wait well dude, we can't move on from this 18 foot how fucking big is 18 foot like I, that seems like ridiculously big I think that they mentioned in the film that he's standing around uh, 12 to 15. I think they say 12 and I think another time they say 15, but it's actually quite interesting because the bear that they really used in the film actually stood 11 feet. Um, Wow. So that's pretty crazy. Yeah, it actually was the biggest bear in captivity. Um, it, it was, they used a Kodiak bear, which is really interesting too, because a Kodiak bear is not a grizzly and you can tell if you know your bears, like someone that lives over in BC, we know know our bears, bears, right? Well, grizzlies are very distinctive because they have a huge fucking hump on their back and they're really, they're really wide and they're just bigger than black bears and stuff like that. Right. So if you see a grizzly, you'll see it with a huge hump. The Kodiak has a little bit of one because they're more of a hybrid of like black bears and a grizzly, but it's the Kodiak's actually bigger than a grizzly bear. Um, and Kodiak bears only live in one region in, in Alaska too. So they're very, they're actually just yeah they're you know you'd only ever see them in one region in the world so but they actually are bigger than a grizzly bear which i thought was pretty cool that they use the kodiak for the grizzly because yeah he's a big motherfucker 11 feet man it's a big fucking bear dude um so yeah pretty pretty interesting so um tyler have you have you ever seen grizzly before nope this was the first time I was I some, it's something i've always known about it is kind of popular um so it's always been on my radar but i've never seen it it's got a hell of a title grizzly yeah. is just like a great name for a movie. well i mean it was i mean this movie was playing on the coattails of jaws like i mean they they strictly named it one word just like jaws it was a it's it's jaws on land is what it is yeah it's a total it was just right on the coattails jaws did so fucking well we need to do a rip off and they didn't waste no fucking time with this this came out right after yeah the, oh yeah this movie, <laughs> like just name it movie, grizzly I, this movie wastes no time either like i love how this movie just got right into it yeah and you know the cool thing the one thing about grizzly that always kind of amazed me like is that they didn't like fuck around with like all the semantics of like you know the gra- like we'll get into that later in other films but like the bear wasn't like mutated it wasn't like it, it was just there doing its fucking thing you know like just there was no environment yeah, it was so like it wasn't like caused from like you know toxic you know sludge and shit. It was just a big fucking bear that found a taste <laughs> for flesh and then just started 
this is fucking th- this is a slasher movie in a sense man like the bears is picking off people one by one it's brutal yeah, yeah that's dude. that's what stood out to me uh, these these movies were all different in their own way and this was like this is the slasher movie of the trio it, it feels like that too like the opening scene or the first kill scene with the two girls and it's like <laughs> He just fucking brutalizes them, man. That's like such a slasher opening, too. Just Dude. like two girls getting fucking ripped to shreds. Every time I watch this movie, I think the same thing. I'm like, that beginning is like a slasher beginning. It's just they get nasty. Like, the one funny thing about this movie, too, like the first like four kills in this movie are all like <laughs> women. Like, they're just the Grizzlies taking out fucking women. It's so bizarre. I think more women, actually, yeah, because the body count in this film's like you know eight or nine and i think this majority like five or six are women and there's like three men that died in this film it's so weird but it does it it, it feels like a slasher film with a bear it really does so okay I, I i've always enjoyed this man um you know get into the cast of the film you got christopher george in the film which uh rest in peace to christopher george man he had like such an amazing run of films i think it was probably starting around this time like when he started doing like his uh like his genre films and stuff like that so um you guys know Christopher George right no not off the top of my head okay I'm really no. bad with I'm really 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 bad with actors bro so like, Christopher George I mean he's he's probably more famous for being the lead in City of the Living Dead oh yeah that guy. like you would know him from that right he's also in okay. graduation day um so yeah so he did like he did a bunch of shit before this but this is kind of like when he got into doing like genre films and stuff so he did Grizzly in 76 and then 77 he did Day of the Animals he was in that film and then he went on to do the exterminator um 1980 uh city living dead in 1980 graduation day in 81 enter the ninja in 81 he did mortuary in 82 <laughs> pieces in 82 and then he fucking passed away he died of a heart attack man it, it, he was pretty young um i think the the autopsy report <clears throat> stated that it was from an old chest injury that he had uh, i guess he had some scarring on his heart that wasn't um caught and his heart failed when he was like in his 50s and shit but it's kind of a shame because like that run of films right there is crazy like this guy was like the genre king in the for a few years yeah he could have been a cool genre star yeah i always liked him i I love his voice i love his approach to acting like he's just he's just i don't know he's just a he was a gnarly dude man so christopher george always kind of sells it for me he's like the main uh he's kind of like the uh, the park ranger in this the main park ranger and stuff like that so he was an uh, older auto of John Wayne, Robert Mitchum. And James yeah, he's got a back catalog. I'm talking like, you know, the later kind of genre films, getting yeah. into horror and stuff like that. Enter the Ninja. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, like really, like a lot, like I like all those films, you know, so fucking shame. Such a shame. But it's, it would have been really interesting to see what he would have done through the 80s after that line of films. So, but uh, Tyler, your first time watch. So, what are your thoughts on the movie? Oh, it was pretty good um it's not anything crazy but it's it, like for the type of movie it is it's just like it's a turn your brain off have some fucking fun like slasher bear movie and it really does like it does it's not a long movie it gets right into it like the characters like are, they're interesting enough like I, I like that like you had some good chemistry between them um one thing i noticed about this movie that really set out to me this movie has like really good cinematography for like the type of movie it is there was like this one shot like where i noticed like right at the beginning where like the camera like slow like panned across the whole room and then like like follow christopher george walked around i was like who the fuck is shooting this movie right. it's got like some a lot of these cool landscape shots from that the helicopter this, this movie's a pretty good time uh it's pretty it's probably the most violent movie of the trio we're talking today so like, it, it's kind of that movie that just felt like it really understood its assignment. And it's like the kind of movie that like seems like a driving classic. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, the, the 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 director, William Gridler, um, he actually died right out. I don't know. I don't remember how he died, but he died like shortly after making like a couple years later. He died. I'm not sure how I'd have to look into that, but but th- he directed uh, like he started his career in '72. He directed three on a meat hook. He did Asylum of Satan in '72. He did Abby in '74, which is pretty infamous for which not really actually um, Abby when he did Abby. That was one that um, essentially, uh, oddly enough, Joe Bob talked about this. That's, I'm not smart, so but um, <laughs> oddly enough, like when Abby was made, obviously it's a re- it's a rip off of The Exorcist. Totally, yeah um and warner brothers sued the production company 
and then they lost actually and um really? that a lot of people believe that that's what made grizzly the next like sort of movie that was a big rip off for jaws because it kind of opened the floodgates like hey we they can't sue us for ripping off their movies so <laughs> oddly enough abby might have led to grizzly yeah that's interesting i mean it's funny that they tried to sue because like i mean yeah abby is very much rip off but i mean it it does its own thing and there's a lot of movies that mimic other movies and stuff like that i mean if you're a production company and you go after everyone that's kind of ripping off your films and shit i mean you'd be stuck in court all fucking the rest of your life like this shit happens yeah, all like, the time. honestly for this movie too like look at the italian it's only it's only a jaws ripoff in the sense that it's like a nature run amok movie because it's like I, I i of the movies we lost i don't think this is even the biggest job well grizzly watch. was made solely because of the success of jaws like yeah, i think that's like, just, I, it's, it's a response to jaws i can definitely right. like i can definitely look at yeah like bring the terror like, it doesn't feel like a blatant rip -off now did you know that the writer said that they had they had never like that they had never basically ripped off jaws no oh, i didn't know that but i mean this is pretty fucking blatant yeah yeah the joe bob actually does like a a breakdown because they shared this last season on last drive-in um joe bob did a breakdown where he's like he gets out a chart and he, he puts all the comparisons like between jaws and this and it's like the whole movie <laughs> right right it literally is though it literally is yeah. yeah they're like we actually were making it before jaws even came out or like we wrote it before jaws came out and i'm like i don't know bro yeah, no really jaws no it, much it, capitalization it's, on it, jaws. it's that whole thing where it's that whole thing where um when final destination came out and i was like i've seen this fucking movie before but i couldn't figure it out for like the longest time and i'm like i've totally seen final destination before and then it was like years later i think i told the story on the podcast before and then code red released um soul survivor on dvd not knowing that when i got into watching it, i was like that's what i'd seen before soul survivor was the original final destination the exact fucking storyline this movie came out in the early 80s like 83 or something like that i remember renting it back in the day and forgetting about it and then watching final destination going i have fucking seen this movie before never really thought anything of it and then and then they got questioned about it so somebody questioned the uh, the writers of final destination and said hey um you know your narrative is very similar to this early 80s film called soul survive and they're like oh we've never seen that one before it's all coincidental it's, it's the same fucking <laughs> yeah, script which also adds like a little bit more of an script. element to it because that uh final destination was written for i believe a uh it originated as an x files episode yeah oh that's cool yeah yeah i mean soul survivor i mean i would say final destination is a better movie but soul survivor it's the same narrative man like it's pretty blatant dude and they, they both there i guess there was two writers and they said that like they had never even heard of the movie and i was like what like i just i mean it's not that obscure like if you're a genre fan you probably especially given they probably come from that era 80s videotape you know videotape yeah. areas that the artwork alone you would release remember because it was so distinctive in what it was it was a great poster man like yeah, there's, there's no some way. movies that are like pretty obscure today that like i remember distinctly like seeing at the video store absolutely. when i was younger absolutely man so i i i, I mean honestly i had a hard time believing them i mean i'm not gonna overly question it and stuff like that but i mean it's so similar dude like it's insanely similar it's like yeah, dude, um, it's like the, it's like the, the girl the who wrote yeah, hunger right. games never heard over seen battle royale Bullshit. i ain't buying it i i that i mean that is a, you know it's a great <laughs> great comparison because like it i find that bullshit, man i find it complete horseshit. like i, I just, just don't believe i her. find it just like i don't know like it like yeah it's, it's very close. different but at least say well, the core idea is the same you. yeah yeah but, you know um but yeah we were just talking about during a break about 75 and black exploitation and stuff he did Sheba baby actually 1975. yeah I was gonna, I was gonna bring that up that's why that's why it. I asked you guys if you're gonna watch like Sheba baby yeah and, you know what man I mean so I was looking at that dude oh, I, that, I oh actually did did he do one called like the zebra man or something um no he zebra did. something I don't see anything zebra he only directly after 72 to 78 so she but then he did grizzly 76 project kill in 76 also he directed day of the animals yeah he did the zebra killer yeah 
Did you oh. guys ever see that one? No, I don't no. see a zebra killer. Oh, right, anyways, like, um, uh, uh, Joe movie? Bob said Joe Bob was talking about that one. It sounds like a nuts black exploitation. It's like huh. it's something about like uh, oh, what is it? It's like zebra yeah, would it be black something and ridiculous. something black and white. Something to do with yeah, black. Yeah, and like white. it's a, like a white person like be or a black person like painting themselves white or something. I they're doing what white it face. <laughs> it's, it sounds nuts though. They're doing white um, face. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> That's fucking <laughs> random. <clears throat> no, I haven't. I haven't seen the zebra killer. Man, I've seen the movie Zebra Head before. The zebra uh, killers. E uh, early nineties movie. Let me let me pull up the description of zebra killers because uh, yeah, I was reading now. it. It sounds ridiculous. So, anyways, yeah, his last movie that he did was The Manitou which uh i know jeremy was a big oh, fan of too i love that it's movie, a white too. guy that goes into blackface that goes into like blackface to kill people really dude, that's horrible <laughs> dude i can't imagine the movie you're getting a fucking release <laughs> yikes that's not even funny <laughs> that's horrible <laughs> oh man Yeah, so he actually the Manitou came out after he died. I don't know how he died. Like I knew that he had died. Yeah, so he died before the Manitou even came out. So that's kind of sad. But he had a nice little run of a uh, run of films there, though, man. Oh like, yeah, man no, he, he. I like his. Th oh, this guy wow, actually has a like, good film. Like that's every crazy. movie that I've seen on here, I actually like. So I've never seen Project Kill or The Get Man or the Wait, Zebra. The one. Zebra Killer sounded pretty cool from when Joe Bob was. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why that one's not on here. It's interesting. I wonder if it's on the writing credits. No, it's not even he listed. He died there. in a helicopter crash. Oh, okay. Right, that sucks. Um, yeah, he was young. He's only thirty-one. Right, right. Yeah, because I mean, he's got some. Uh, not even this thirty. Wow. Some that genre sucks. cult classics here. In fact, yeah, in the Grizzly and Day the Animals. Like, he died when he was thirty. He cranked out like seven like cult like cult classic movies. Yeah, man, it's pretty crazy, actually. So it makes me feel like a failure in life. No, no. <laughs> 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 ah shit shit yeah Gri uh, grizzly is one of those movies where like it's like to me it always felt like a late night on cable tv type movie that's just very enjoyable mm -hmm. but like watching it today like it does feel a little slow at times yeah um <clears throat> like you you but it's like it one it leaves you wanting more like grizzly action you know what i mean like you just want to see more killer bear shit the whole time yeah it comes out but, so hard with it yeah they spent a lot of time with like you know fighting with the fucking park owner what not the owner but the guy that like runs the whole show and shit like that you know they do a lot of yeah. that shit you know it's the, it's the it's the internal battle you know that whole politicized fucking you know head super or head fucking whatever supervisor that clashes with his boss and shit like that and you know he's he, the, the boss is the real villain here you know he's not closing it down he's all it's all about the mighty dollar and shit like that it's very politicized um yeah you know it's it's yeah i mean we can see what's going on there and so i'm not going to close down there's no problem here <laughs> we've only lost fucking you know even like it, it's kind of crazy like you, you know, those two girls get killed and somebody and then that one of the park rangers which is the funniest scene ever like there's this killer bear running around she's like hey i'm just gonna go soak my feet in this fucking waterfall and then she gets fucking hacked up and shit and i'm like but then you know she was a park ranger and this guy's still not willing to admit that there's a problem here because the bottom line is the dollar right <laughs> it's really funny yeah. man. So it's the capitalism part of the angle of this is just so ridiculous like he doesn't care that people are getting picked off one by one you ain't closing that fucking park. It's just ridiculous. So, I mean, you look at it like this and the real villain isn't, isn't the grill grizzly. It's the fucking, the park owner or whatever. It's actually, yeah, that's funny. like straight jaws. It yeah, is. it totally is that that whole angle is, is straight jaws too. Right. Yeah. So, um, but, 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 but here's the thing, right? Cause like jaws, it makes sense. Cause it's like, oh, this is like, will cripple our town. That's that basically the entire economy. Yeah. You can at least works, understand their point works of view. on, like the beat the the tourism well they're a vacation like, spot right of course that makes but like the the camp or not camp but like the the uh nature spot like there's an, it's not like that people are like like boosting the economy by going well hiking. i think what it's <laughs> you know because, what I mean? <laughs> because this movie this movie was shot i think it was shot somewhere in this i don't know somewhere in the south but i think it's it's supposed to be taking place like in like the midwest or something i i, I don't know if they actually mentioned exactly what 
town or city or, or um uh state that this is in maybe it's why I'm, i don't know do, do they ever mention exactly where this um, is taking place because i'm thinking maybe what he's hinting remember. at is like you know without the uh without the uh the income of you know the the campers and you know just it, it, closing the park because i'm assuming that they get weather and then they have to close yeah the but park usually down. parks are free Right? right well not not like it doesn't really usually cost money to go to the park yeah you, to get into those things in camp and stuff yeah those big national parks and stuff you gotta pay to get into them yeah really yeah so i'm thinking he probably they're only open a couple months of the year because they're in the mountains they probably get their weather and shit. they got to close down because liability and shit. you don't want people up in the mountains in the fucking snow it's not safe at all um even though it'd be safer in the winter because the grizzlies would be hunt or would be hibernating <laughs> <laughs> in theory yeah but not this isn't the average bear bro no no um this is but, grizzly but anyways it's you know it, it just plays off the whole capitalism even, thing you're not even gonna like comment on the fact that i just said a funny joke i probably didn't even hear it what'd you say i said it's not the average bear it's not <laughs> do you guys not know yogi bear dude dude that is so <laughs> cheesy so cheesy come on i actually stole that from joe bob too <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was that was pretty cheesy i actually i bought the, this is so stupid i bought the severin for the show and i watched the joe bob on shutter <laughs> i didn't even watch the blu-ray bro that's ridiculous dude <sighs> i'm just saying i love that. like anytime that dude but it it would suck though because it was two hours and 37 minutes yeah that I spent on Grizzly <laughs> because the Joe Bob's long as hell. You know, what's actually really, but that, that was a great double feature. He did. He did alligator and Grizzly one night. Oh, that does cool. sound like a good double feature. Yeah. That'd be fun. Um, alligator is a lot of fun. I came up a lot in that movie when I watched it for 80. Alligator to me is like one of the best Jaws ripoffs ever because yeah, it has like no like, downtime. Okay. But then like rewatching it when we were 80 prep, I was like, wow, this movie's like Robert Force kicks ass. This movie's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, this one has like it's got like really terrible almost like tv fucking sappy music and shit at times in it <laughs> yeah the music the music is pretty bad in this movie to be honest that's what I like i was like i was like kind of puzzled by like how good the cinematography was mm -hmm. yeah i mean yeah no, it does have good cinematography but dude i don't know i love the look of 70s films that are outside in the wilderness like they i just feel it. like the wilderness looked so awesome i'm a and, sucker for big landscape shots like yeah I'll just be watching I, some like random, even like, even screen. prophecy like opens up with like big helicopter shots and shit like that um yeah i'll be yeah. watching some random western that i think is just like okay then they'll have like a nice big beautiful shot of like the mountains and the valley and i'm like oh well yeah like right from the this opening right scene this, the the establishing shot in the film actually is is a really cool uh shot taken from a chopper because nowadays they just use a drone to do this but like they got the chopper fucking flying over the water through, like through the mountains and shit like that and it's really fast paced and shit it looks really yeah, good that was production value 45 years ago and that's that's exactly what it is man opening shots man can sell your whole film like i mean you get to see all that landscape and shit like that it's it makes the film seem much so much bigger than it actually really is i mean it's not really the highest budget movie and stuff but use your location properly and then you get a film like grizzly right yeah, yeah it's always the same about like low budget movies like you just gotta yeah. you gotta maximize your budget exactly you have the good op opening establishing shot and shit and uh set the bar man so I, I i agree though i mean there's there's you know all these kind of nature run amok films always have like the stupidest character decisions in them ever like hey i'm gonna go over here by myself and do this shit i'm like really isn't this what is, <laughs> they do <laughs> they always fucking do this in these movies and i'm like i would never ever go off on my own with a fucking bloodthirsty grizzly roam in the neighborhood like knowing like i mean i live around grizzlies like you don't go out there if there's grizzlies around man because some fuckers I, hunt you my they bear hunt. knowledge is low see like yeah, black, no shit about like bears. black bears and shit like man, we barely more... ever have bears like yeah. I, like sometimes we'll get bears down here like in my actual neck of the woods like like you know a mile from me or something yeah i've never seen one but i've seen oh pictures God. of them dude this past summer we had an infestation because it was so dry that all the there was no food in the forest for the bears so they all came into the city we were, i was literally delivering mail every single day with bears on the streets 
it was crazy, it was so crazy dude it was so fucking nuts like there's people that have lived in the city for like 40 50 years never seen anything like this there was bears everywhere dude it was fucked it was so crazy man but i mean these are all like little small black or you know decent sized black bears and shit like that grizzlies won't come down like that yeah ours are like black bears i think probably i mean i live in like there's a ton of grizzlies where like just a little bit north of here and stuff like i I, i've been river fishing and i'm fishing with the grizzlies it's crazy man they're they're so fucking huge and scary like you don't want to go face to face with any type of black bears are more scared to you than anything they they see you they're going to run away like they're they want they want no part of you no part grizzlies a little bit different they're hungry enough they'll they're they have this mentality where they'll actually hunt you if like if you're hunting grizzly they'll actually turn it around on you and they'll hunt you so you got to be super careful when you're hunting grizzly black bears fuck they're just trying to get the fuck out of there man but grizzlies are a different breed dude like they're they're vicious man and they're huge so that's what kind of makes it scary you know in this idea that this thing's like all bloodthirsty and actually going after people and shit that's a scary thought man because you know a a man against a grizzly you don't stand a chance dude (laughs) you really don't like there's people around here i mean there i think there was a bear attack Uh, a few years back actually like a black it was a sick old black bear whatever attacked somebody but like he fought him off like you could probably you know you can live through that shit but with a grizzly no fucking way like Mm -hmm. there's a there's a scene in this film which is like the greatest scene ever where the the horse gets his head swatted off and like (laughs) most people that look at that be like oh my god that's so ridiculous but (laughs) but grizzlies literally have the power to like hit cars and move them like they could swap cars and and flip them more like taking off that taking off that horse's head isn't a far stretch man like it really isn't you would f- he would crush that fucking head in a second with a swat man they the, the pounds per square inch man they're so powerful man it's scary so like every time that happens when i see that scene i'm like you know what people are probably laughing at that going no fucking way and i'm like it's possible man it really is possible so yeah grizzlies are i mean in this case the the kodiak even is bigger. this a, the, is this the one did the they bite off the kid's leg or swipes off the kid's leg is that this one um i think so yeah i think it is this one yeah Dude, yeah it is it, it, brutal, you know, it is in this one yeah it is in this one yeah i love it yeah I the, the, the bear that, definitely the, the bear, <laughs> yeah this, this this movie actually is a lot more gory than you, you would expect th- yeah, yeah then you would expect right it's kind of interesting because like yeah this movie's pretty violent it is man it opens up with some That's violent what I like kills and you know like the first like half of the movie is pretty rampant with kills it does slow down like i said you know it gets a little bit politicized and stuff like with all that internal shit that's going on and stuff and like there's some character decisions in the film that are film that are a little bit ridiculous but i really do like the one character the the um the trapper character I like I like that whole idea, man. He's up there like living with the animals and shit. He's tagged all the bears and I don't know. I think that guy's kind of cool. But you know, all the cool guys in the in the movies, they always demise real nasty too, right? Don't they? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it just sucks, man. Because he was he was a cool character, but anyways. Um, but I think the one takeaway from this movie though, like I think they did a really good job with the actual training of the bear because this bear, this Kodiak bear that was in uh captivity was yeah this bear is actually in another bear movie too yeah so this might have been the first one because it was untamed at the time they had a trainer and they trained it so well that it actually started to get like because naturally grizzlies and like bears and stuff aren't actually that intelligent um but it's they 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 trained it so well that it actually started to do things that they were trying to get it to do and i was like fuck that's crazy man that's very unheard of but yeah, to start with like an untamed bear that was just in captivity and and actually get this type of product out of it is pretty amazing. So I always look at that angle when I'm watching these type of films too. That's what kind of sucks about newer, you know, grizzly and you know, animal run amok animal film, nature films and stuff like that is we get all the CG, right? Because yeah. they don't want to use real animals. They don't want to use real animals because PETA stepped in there and they're, they're not allowing real animals to be on sets. And, you know, yeah, you know, we that, all is, know. that is like a big, big difference with that. today's films. Yeah. So the films don't have previous. the same type of feel because you're not using the real thing. Um, I mean, there still is some um, real animals in movies right. and stuff. It's like not that. as like, prolific. It's just not, it doesn't have as uh, much, um, like, they don't have as much freedom. No. so it's almost like they would rather not even bother a lot of times because yeah. they're you know 
obviously have to deal with oh, like, yeah. more regulation. Oh, it's, Peter it's ruins well, everything. That's, that's the thing. Like people can't afford to do these things anymore because it's just more of a hassle than anything. So they just say, fuck it. We're going to CG our bears, right? Or, or we're going to CG these animals and stuff because it's just, it's too much of a headache back in these days. I mean, let's do a fucking nature run amok film. We'll just go to the zoo and, and, and grab an animal. <laughs> that's probably pretty much how it, worked, how it went down kind of thing. Right. It's just so different. So different, man. Um, but yeah, no, th- this movie has got some pretty shocking, like, yeah, you brought up the, the kid with the leg and stuff like, Kid gets his leg <laughs> fucking swatted off, and then the mum gets. He lives brutalized. though. They, 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 they yeah, yeah. But the mum doesn't. I don't know. The, the mum gets the mum gets fucking. Yeah, the mum gets done on that one and stuff. So, um, but this this movie is always memorable for the ending. I think the ending is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. What? How does? I'm trying to think. It's well, they ripped they off Jaws. They explode. They exploded the. Oh, they're exploding. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's, it's Jaws. Like Joe Bob everyth- pointed that out in the in at the very end of the the the. He literally had two poster boards, and it's like kaboom, kaboom was at the bottom. <laughs> I just love how it breaks down. Like he's shooting this thing, and then all of a sudden, like they never have any mention that he has a rocket launcher in there, and he just pulls a rocket launcher out of the fucking uh, helicopter and <laughs> fucking one shot and fucking boom. <laughs> dude i love that part man it's it's almost as good as the part in prophecy i think prophecy might have the single funniest kill it, it might even be in the history of film like it's literally the funniest thing ever like i don't know man i i think it's literally one of the funniest things it's just because of who it happens to also <laughs> so but we'll get there man but it, but yeah the ending of grizzly i mean grizzly is very much a mirror it's mirroring jaws i mean it's pretty obvious what's going on here i mean it's all part of cinema right but i like grizzly though i i like i, I mean i feel like it, i feel like it does have a little bit of downtime in it I, you know as for as much carnage as it has i feel like it's a little bit lumped at times like yeah, you get it, all these kills in the beginning and it slows right yeah. down and then it's the like ending. the, I, it's I like the uh the yeah. structure of the script could have used a little polish to make it more of like a horror film like mm-hmm. more of a uh like a drive-in film or something where essentially you want like nudity or kills every, you know, 15 minutes or something. Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it, it does come out of the can and kind of grabs your attention. Then it does have like a little bit of a lull. What there. this movie really did need. Yeah. It definitely needs some sharpening on the script for sure, because I feel like it just, it peaks so early <laughs> and you're like waiting for it to come back to that. And you're like, okay, then you get the third act, which I mean, it obviously ends with a very memorable moment and stuff like that. But I mean, they needed like a goblin soundtrack for this or some shit because the music is atrocious in this movie. Yeah. The music's not good. <laughs> it, 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 it actually makes it feel like a, like not a horror film because the, the music is so bad. Right. Soundtrack is everything, man. If you had some dark shit in there, you know, even like some fucking Claudio Semenendi shit, man. Like, obviously you're not going to really doing that in American film, but, but you, you, you got, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like music changes the landscape of what you're watching, like visually a lot too. Right. So yeah, you get in that like stock, sure. like you get in like that stock fucking, you know, sappy country fucking living back music and shit. You're just like, no, it's not working. It doesn't work for me. So kind of the downfall to it, but overall really fun film. I think it, I mean, this, what does it run like it runs it's like 90 it's, minutes but it's, it's like 90 minutes flat i don't know the version i watched was super fucking long so it yeah, does, it's like 90 it, minutes flat yeah 90 minutes and it does feel a lot longer because of all the politicized shit that's in it but which i'm not a big fan of because I, I mean politics and so i hate politics i hate all that shit i mean i just want to see some fucking if i'm watching a killer animal film i want to see some killer animals you know <laughs> i get it you can't you can't do the first act through the whole movie i get that you got to have some type of plot narrative yeah, to it right? right but at the same time constructions if you don't too. have that you also do run the risk of just getting super redundant and then mm-hmm. it's just not good either but i mean even like i mean if you were to space out those kills and have them like throughout a film it, it, it yeah they definitely comp- could have done a better job with that it's just like if you just go kill after kill and you don't really have a plot until it just get redundant mm-hmm. yeah so oh man um like i mean it, you know i i hate using the term like they they don't make movies like this anymore but when we use that term we're actually being sincere about it and i'm yeah. not just using it to be cliche 
when it really comes to killer animal movies the, the, they'll never be like no they'll never make movies this like this way again using real bears and stuff like that and like even even the scene where they where they bait the grizzly that was a real fucking deer that they gutted even listen i don't even need real bears necessarily but i need practical effects now it's just cg you know what i mean uh, like i'm fine with people in bear costumes which there are some i think scenes in uh it definitely (laughs) in prophecy well prophecy is a dude in the suit it's actually a really tall there's actually dudes in suits in this one too yeah. just they they do clever camera I work see yeah. claws, but, but there's really a lot of scenes claws. with the actual kodiak in this film though. oh yeah 100 percent. yeah but like i would rather have you know a mix of a real bear and a guy in a suit but i'll even take just the guy in a suit versus cg because oh, cg yeah. just never looks right 100 percent. you know 100%. i mean i can have some i'll, I'll like like what crawl the alligator See, movie like that was fun but it's just it's it's never gonna be alligator here here's the thing here's the thing with cg with me um i probably mentioned this before but like th- there's like a time and a place for cg i feel and a type of film that you know that can have cg and it totally works like i have no problem with but like when you can do practical effects for a film that's when if if you go the if you go the route and do uh cg in those type of films that's what takes me out of it i'm like i know you could have done that with practical effects but you know the cheaper route was doing cg that's what takes me out of it if i'm watching like a sci-fi film and there's like a bunch of whatever to you know you know some type of like movie that doesn't matter that has it doesn't take me out of it because that kind of makes sense that you're gonna you know do that angle and stuff like that mm-hmm. but killer animal films man it, it like all of a sudden like this fucking fake ass fucking bear comes out of the out of the woods you're like nah bro like you could have used some real there. Even a dude in a costume is better. I mean, that's what Claws does, right? Like they they've got a dude in a suit <laughs> that's going around fucking picking people off one by one. It's the same shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even at this point, instead of using all the CG and bull- just use stock footage, then man, I- I'm more happy to see stock footage, which every killer or nature on a muck film has stock footage, more or less for like transitional shots. You ever notice that you could be watching films like. There's a scene in, well, we'll get to the scene in uh, Claws here in a minute. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, even using stock footage and stuff, I'd be more happy to see than fucking shitty CG. That's just me. But like I said, there's a time and a place. Certain types of movies can have CG and it does not bother me one bit. Slasher film CG, fuck yeah, it takes me right out of it. There's nothing worse than watching a slasher film and seeing literally someone get their throat slit and having fake blood fly out. Oh, I hate that so it's much. It's so dude. fucking. It, it's like it's actually like it, it's like a punch to the viewer. You're like, oh, it's just so damn cheap, dude. Like, it, it's disrespectful. It just doesn't look right. It's disrespectful to the horror fan to see fucking it's CG like, blood flying out of a neck. I'm like, fuck this shit, man. It drives me nuts. It's like we we know it's fake, but like it was almost even like just like throwing back to like you know like 70s Italian movies. Like, yeah, we know it's fake, but you know what? We're gonna go with this bright red style, and like I, I think that's like fine. It gives you like a stylistic stamp. Oh. It just looks icky when you throw like CGI in there. I would rather take the red paint blood than cg I like blood that blood. it's like it's a char- it's part of the charm it's like it's their style like you know it's fake you know yeah. this person not actually getting the throat slit like what's the big deal it was a product of its time i mean there was there, there's movies i've seen back <clears> in the <throat> day like in the 70s and shit where the blood looked pink you know it was like almost like a light pink color and i'm like the fuck like yeah. what the hell is that you know like but i mean again i'd rather see that than in cg blood like ah oh, so that's you know a big fucking problem with films nowadays and shit it's just it's just a lot cheaper to do obviously and it's less time consuming right it's about time too yeah. because people's attention it's just like, cheaper to do that than pay people to like and pay for material exactly to, you, pay yeah, one guy so. to do with the effects on this film or pay a whole team of practical you know doing prosthetics and and mixing up blood and all this shit. it's way more money and time yeah I think the problem is the big thing is the time really i mean obviously money's yeah issue, the time, time so it definitely slows down the shooting schedule 100 percent, yeah yeah so um but yeah no i i i enjoy grizzly man i think it's uh i think it's a really great film i you know if i were to compare like grizzly to day of the animals i actually do like day of the animals more than this movie um 
just solely for this the fact that like Leslie Nielsen's in that movie playing the biggest fucking asshole ever. It's like if you know Leslie Nielsen as like the funny naked gun Leslie Nielsen, and then you watch if, if you if you've ever only seen Leslie Nielsen as like a funny guy, and then you watch Day of the Animals, it'll shock you. He's such a fucking dick. Like one of the biggest douches ever on screen. I think I did a top 10 one time of like, like biggest douches on screen. I think he was in there, man. It was like, <laughs> like he's such an asshole. It's just so funny to see him being such a dick on screen. It's crazy. Yeah. But people tend to forget Day the that, animals like, is cool. Cause it just, it's like a, it's like all animals attack. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I love about that movie. And like, they use so many different types of animals that mu that movie must've been a little bit of a pain to do because they use so many different types of animals and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, like I mean, there's like everything. Yeah, it, it's a really cool premise. I love that movie, man. It's great. Um, but yeah. no, I mean, Grizzly's no slouch, man. I think he just stepped his game up on that one a little bit. But again, you know, very similar. I, I wonder if it's even the same dude that shot those movies for Christ's sake. Um, great cinematography in that one. But um, yeah, Grizzly. You guys got anything else on? Any more thoughts on Grizzly? No, I think I'm good. Yeah, I think we cover it. <clears throat> Um, oh yeah, what I was saying about the deer, I was like, even parts like that in movies now, like Peter sees that shit and they're just like, no, because that was a real deer that they strung up for to bait that grizzly. You know, someone recently just shot that and gutted that bear or that that deer. So, but they even talk about it in the film. They're like, yeah, we just we just shot and killed our uh, that was our bait that we just shot. <laughs> like they just literally shot a fucking deer to bait a, a grizzly. It's pretty funny. Um, so yeah. But don't they do that in this with the bear cub too? Yeah, they, they find that bear cub and they use it as bait for the grizzly. <laughs> he fucking eats the bear cub. Yeah, that's yeah, it does up. eat the bear cub. Which is bears do cannibalize each other a lot. Yeah, I, I think it's that. I think it's only males. It's only the yeah. males. That do no, that. no, w w the females eat their own. Like if they're if it, it like especially in polar bears, um, if there's if if it's too hard to find food to, to support two cubs they'll eat one wow yeah there must and have been uh if you've ever watched grizzly man the documentary which is one of the most like fucking crazy things ever like there's a lot like he he starts flipping out because it, it's not raining so the salmon aren't aren't swimming and he, she's like he's like flipping out he's like sasha is eating her children bring some goddamn rain <laughs> like he's so mad <laughs> hmm. You guys never seen Grizzly Man? No, no I, I, I know about it. Never... That's the that's the Herzog documentary, right? Yeah, dude, it's so good. Like yeah, the dude I'm is not. I'm gonna watch that soon. Yeah, I've watched it a couple times. He was just he was crazy, dude. He was just so into the bears, like he, but like, dude, he would literally like walk like walk up to him and stuff. Like it was nuts, man. He like did he really did create like a bond with them, but he stayed too long where they started starving and right before hibernation or whatever so yeah. you know he got he ran into one he wasn't too familiar with and it ate him fuck for real crazy yeah him and his girlfriend and there's wow. actually audio of it that's never been like put out but in the documentary it shows the person listen to the audio because the camera was rolling when they get attacked and they ju it just looks so disturbing the person Damn, was watching it. it. I gotta watch it real. I can't believe you guys never see that. It's like super popular. I, really, I just got into Horzog. I'm kind of like running through his movies right now. Hmm. I've, I've slept on him too long. There's a documentary literally called Werner Horzog Eats His Shoe, and it literally is exactly what it sounds. And he's just so captivating and like so interesting and funny. Oh, and Jesus, I gotta dude. watch all the movies. That's crazy. He eats his shoe. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, he like he seasons it and like boils it and actually like eats it in front of a crowd. <laughs> it, it's twenty minutes long. I'm pretty sure it's on YouTube. You should check it out. It's called Warner Bros. Like eats his shoe. That's crazy. So, I guess ratings on Grizzly. Yeah, who wants to go? Um, I'll go first. Set the bar. Um, yeah. So Grizzly, I've seen it a handful of times. I've always liked it. Um. I used to think it was probably my favorite killer bear film, but I don't think so now. Um, 
but uh yeah it's uh it's like i said it's one of those movies that just is perfect for like a joe bob showing like late at night which i'm i don't think i ever actually saw this on joe bob or anything back in the day but i but prophecy showed before a couple times honestly from my memory but um yeah i just thought this this film always felt like just one that i would like it also feels like a dad movie you know yeah. what i mean dave parker always talked about dad movies like something your dad would be real into hmm. um which i like uh but yeah uh i would probably say i would give it a 7.5 out of 10. tyler all right yeah i kind of agree this is like uh just like this would be like this is kind of like one of my like choices for like late night late night flick um it's not perfect but it does the job oh uh, i'll throw it a six and a half yeah i'm with jp on this one man i'm i'm in at a seven and a half also um you know there's one scary part man can you imagine waking up in a fucking in a bear in a bear's uh kill hole that would be fucked up what's oh yeah dude <laughs> like that's what they do they kill you they bury yeah. you but he like he didn't die he wakes up in there you're like oh fuck that's a, that's a scary thought man um but yeah overall it's fun <clears throat> it's uh you know it's got it i think i i like i think the biggest problem with this one is that it peaks too early a little bit and then it yeah. comes back down with the ending and stuff but i think there's a lot of shit in the middle that i do get i i get a little bit bored with like you know me with uh with political shit and stuff i just i kind of tune out a little bit on that stuff because i'm just like fuck you i don't really care <laughs> you know there's different types of movies that you're fine with that shit and like dramas crime type movies and stuff but <clears throat> when i'm watching killer you know nature on a muck fo- films man i, w- I want to get down to the nitty-gritty and see some uh that first act shit, man you know so but uh yeah all right so anyways uh that is grizzly from 1976 all right so getting into the second featured film here um from 1977 we got a movie called claws Uh, i believe this one was actually marketed at least in canada as grizzly part two which makes sense i mean this came out the year after grizzly speaking of which there is a grizzly part two yeah that actually was but when did they 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 filmed that one so they they, it actually has an insane cast too it's like george clooney like there's there's like a bunch of people in yeah pre-fames pre-fames right yeah um no well no it was like it was in the 80s like 80 82 or something yeah so that's like pre-fame and uh yeah that's like pretty hot shit yeah okay but um you know they they actually apparently joe bob talked about this um but they uh essentially um started production on it filmed like a bunch of the movie and then the investor or somebody like literally um left and essentially like took all the money so then the one of the other producers like spent like a bunch of uh time trying to get somebody to fund the rest of the movie and they did but and they've shot the film pretty much almost but didn't have enough money for like post-production and then it just never they never finished it until she actually finished it in 2020 i believe that's so fucked up like 30 <laughs> bucks, 40 years later that, like a half a movie was done or whatever you know yeah it's interesting um yeah, so Claus snops says, Hunters wound a grizzly bear in a national forest in Alaska. Soon after, the wounded bear goes off and kills several other hunters, hikers, campers, uh, the sheriff, and a little Boy Scout. <laughs> okay, thanks for all that. Uh, yeah, and then some dude sets out to um, take revenge on the uh, on the grizzly. Um, so... Th- Thoughts on Claws? I mean, I'm assuming this is a first time watch for everybody here. Um, yeah, yeah, this, this seems was... like a pretty largely unseen movie. Yeah, I don't yeah. think it has much of a release. Bro. Watched it on YouTube. It had a like, VHS oh. release. I know that. Yeah, this yeah. is a VHS release that I had. I mean, it's so funny because it, this is one of those movies where I was like halfway into it and I was like, 
You know, I wonder if Vinegar Syndrome got a hold of this. This probably raised my rating three points because it would be so Dude, crystal I clear. thought the same thing because Dude, like, I was the like, first the part of the movie, I'm like, I can't see shit. <laughs> Dude, I was so frustrated with this because like, you know, it's lower budget and stuff, but it's those transfer, those VHS transfers are so dark. You literally can't see shit that's happening in the, in the night scenes at all in this movie. It's so fucking dark, yeah. dude. I was like, oh my God. I'm like, I'm going to struggle through this. I'm going to struggle through this so hard. Yeah. Like remember the scene where like the kids, it's like straight out of Jaws also, yeah. but like the kids are like faking a bear costume. Yeah. Yeah. Like you can't see shit. And then like two kids just pop up in, <laughs> out of the darkness. Right. And you're like, you're like, I think they were wearing a bear costume, but I'm just speculating because I couldn't see anything. Yeah. Actually that scene leads into probably the best part in the whole film where the bear actually gets a hold of a kid and fuck he's it, it's kind of a haunting scene you get to see that a little bit where the bear's dragging the kid in the sleeping bag and his yeah. arm is like lifeless and it's all bloody and it's like banging on the rocks as he's dragging him and like in that moment you're like oh fuck he just totally killed that fucking kid but it turns out the kid didn't even die i'm like really yeah i'm like oh well that was so disappointing i was like fuck because it looked like the kid was dead and then it turns out he didn't die so um but yeah, no, this one, this one is a little bit different. It's got a weird setup to it. Like the movie opens up with basically a ranger or a guide. He's taking these poachers into the bush and they're like watching these two huge grizzlies like fight. And they're like, okay, well, we're going to kill these. So they shoot, they, they shoot and kill one of the grizzlies. The other one gets away. And actually that scene is pretty cool with those two grizzlies fucking like um, fighting each other and stuff. It's obviously the stock footage, I guess. But I, I think that's a pretty cool thing to capture on film of like Grizzlies going out and shit because they're fucking powerhouses, man. So anyways, these poachers, they shoot and kill one of the bears. The other one gets wounded and fucks off, starts going on a rampage and shit like that. But the weirdest thing about the narrative is that like it cuts to like five years later. So I'm like, yeah, basically you shoot this bear. You, you get those, those. Yeah, weird, I thought that was kind of weird. Um, but I'm like, what text. happened? It, yeah, I'm like, yeah, so you get these texts and it tells you that it takes place like five years later. I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm like, okay, so it follows our lead character here who was, a, you know, five years prior was attacked by this bear. He got all fucked up and shit. So it's kind of like a double revenge story where this bear is like, you know, trying to get at people for trying to fucking end its existence. And then this guy is on a, uh, he's on a revenge tip too, because this bear fucking attacked him and fucked up his life. So you got like this double revenge act thing happening in the film. It's so strange. But then it gets like super like into mythology and stuff like that, where it plays off on the native angle too, where um, they call the bear. I can't exactly pronounce the term like Cody coat coat attack or something like that, but it stands for like Satan bear or devil bear or something like that. And it plays yeah, into the it Satan bear. Yeah. Satan bear. So they call this bear and it's, 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 it exists in their mythology. It's like, um, they're not really saying that the bear's coming after them because he was shot and stuff like that. It's actually like, there's a spirit in there. It's like a devil bear. And there's like this whole thing with, you know, mythology of like this, this devil bear and stuff. And I'm like, okay, well, that's kind of cool. Um, but it's just so offensive because the dude that plays the, the old native in the film is like this fucking Italian dude that's putting on like this native accent shit. It's just so, it's so seventies of the past, right? It's like Mickey Rooney fucking playing an Asian guy. It's, it's so offensive, but anyways. Um, but yeah, this movie actually has a lot going on in it in theory, but it's just like, for myself overall it feels like a total I, I kept checking to make to see if it was a tv film but it's not a fucking tv movie it feels like a damn tv movie because the music is so shit and it just feels like a pg rated type film um you know most of the carnage is off screen it does act kind of like a slasher film at times though there's a lot of scenes where characters will be talking and shit and all of a sudden a barrel just like jump onto the screen and take them out and stuff it's totally a dude in a fucking costume yeah which i, I which noticed I no with, like a lot of the bear attack scenes of like the editing it's like they would have like random shots of like some bear running or just growling or just random shit like that and they would just cut back and forth. Oh, tons quick, of like, stock footage in this film. Like, yeah, so they would just cut back and forth like a guy rolling on the round screaming, and it just looks like shit. So this movie, to me, was like, <laughs> by the end of it, I was laughing. I was shaking my head going, oh, my God. This All this movie, to me, was fucking really bizarre editing. Thank you, Todd, for bringing that up. I have it written right in front of me. Really bizarre editing. <clears throat> fucking copious amounts of stock footage like half the movie seems like it's stock footage and fucking slow-mo and like and and, fla oh, and, oh. and flashbacks and sorry in flashbacks really really sappy ass flashbacks and shit i'm just like oh my god 
like they overuse the the flashbacks and and uh the stock footage in this film to the point where it's like you, you almost kind of forget that there's different angles so like that there's these revenge stories going on this got this whole mythology thing happening and stuff which they don't really they kind of they try to explain it away the native character tries to explain it away and stuff like that but at this point in the film you're just kind of you're kind of drawn out at least i was i was just like i just want this thing to end i really just wanted it to end and i was just curious on how they were gonna fucking you know kill the grizzly if they are going to kill the grizzly and stuff like that but there, there's definitely some parts in the end of the film too that made literally no fucking sense to me i was just like okay so i don't know if you guys noticed this but this shit bugs the shit out of me so there's a scene in the end of the film where um dude's fighting the grizzly and he punctures a gas can and essentially what happens is the bear gets coated in fuel which is fine that's <laughs> just you know it's just a prelude to what's probably going to happen it's any film fan can tell you well something's covered in gas it's probably gonna end in fire so anyways yeah. but there's another character that shows up that never saw this happen she never saw this bear get s- soaked in fuel anyway she she shows up and they, she's trying to help out fight she brings a fucking flare gun to the fight not yeah. knowing that this bear is in there like you're you are actually going to shoot a flare gun at a fucking bear like you have I mean, to be it's out better your, than punching it really but you got to be out your goddamn mind because if you shoot a bear with a fucking flare gun it's going to piss it off and it's going to come directly at you and you're going to get fucking like the horse and uh, grizzly you're going to lose your fucking head but it's just kind of funny uh, because the flare gun is like a t- total accelerant for for fuel right so <laughs> Anyways, I'll just leave it at that. You can use your imagination for exactly what happens by the end of the film, which is actually really funny because if you guys have watched that, they use some type of like weird big dummy thing. And I was like, oh, it's a great dummy scene. Because <laughs> it falls off. Oh, for the with... bear, dude? <laughs> yeah. Listen. Oh, my that's God. Yeah, I started laughing so hard. I'm like, I I mean, we got so to see a dummy now. death. We got the to see best a dummy scene, death. I literally yeah. was going to bring that up. I was like, the best <laughs> scene in the movie is the fact that we get a flaming dummy death of bear, oh, bear yeah. down like, a cliff. It, it's yeah. just like it, and it's like falling down a cliff or something yeah it it's does. just it like on fire not moving oh my and, god uh, dude, dude it's it funny does, like, shit. A whole flip. like i literally like the movie was like not the best like the whole way through and but honestly i do think the transfer really hurt it but i when we got to that part at the end i was like ah, that was at least satisfying <laughs> yeah it, it was a little bit of uh yeah, I think it was Kuska. Kuska. I think they were saying oh. Kuska. That's that was the native term for. Um, actually, fuck. I'm, I keep saying native. We're not even allowed to say that in Canada anymore. It's derogatory. Um, indigenous. Sorry about that. I, I want to be. I don't want to get canceled like I always get canceled on every fucking week here. It's just very sensitive where I come from. Very very sensitive. Um, in which we'll get into that in prophecy because I live through that all the time. <laughs> um but yeah the indigenous characters um I, I can't remember what i was saying now the fuck was i saying oh yeah with kuska the, the, that was the that was the uh the term used was kuska for devil devil bear or whatever so um <laughs> damn devil bears damn devil bears but you know that was the one thing about the movie that actually kind of infuriated infuriated me a little bit because they hint about like you know the spirits and um and, the, and the, again, they do that in this film too. They have these weird, like, kind of hallucinations with spirits and stuff. And he ends up like falling in that. Oh man, dude, that whole third act where they're like trying to save him down the cliff that goes on for like a half an hour, dude. A half an hour of the movie is literally them trying to like save this dude that fell down a fucking cliff and shit. It takes forever. It's like they're just padding the time like a motherfucker in this film to get to the, you know, the, the resolution to the film. And I'm just like, man, this goes on way too long structured really odd but anyways going back to like the mythology and stuff i wish they had like explored that a lot more i wish that was the core narrative to it instead of thinking oh well these poachers pissed off the bear because they shot it a bunch of times and it it got bloodthirsty five years later like what the fuck happened in these five years there must have been a bunch of attacks bears they're not elephants man they don't just fucking remember things like on the drop of a dime you fucking gave me this as the bear was like moving and then like it had just like kind of returned to this area like circled back yeah i think they do mention something like that because that's they're... that's how i like when i would said five years later i figured like this bear was like or like this i don't know like how long bears live like this family but the way, just, like this but the way they bears. set it up though the way they set it up is like you know they shoot the bear and it, it, it gets all pissed off that's what makes it go on a rampage but then five years like if it was on a rampage and bloodthirsty at this point it wouldn't have went anywhere 
right? Yeah. It's not going to circle back five years later. That, so I was a little bit confused about that. But anyways, I, I, I just didn't like in the narrative that they they put this in the forefront like it was kind of a revenge thing for this grizzly because, you know, these poachers were trying to take it out and stuff, which, you know, is very common around here and stuff like that, too. It's huge. Um, but, you know, then they it, and then about halfway through the film, we get like this this other part of the um, narrative where, you know, it's it's this actual spirit and 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 the uh, the native characters trying to you know explain this way and so I wish it had been more upfront with that because then I would have bought into the film a lot more because that type of mythology of like native folklore and stuff like that has very, always been very interesting to me especially with bears because they're kind of sacred and like there's a lot of different tribes that like you know the bears they have a lot of sacredism to them and stuff like that and so I felt like there was a missed opportunity there with explaining that away I think that would have been a lot better angle for the film so I was a little bit disappointed with you know the explanation for it and stuff and i don't know man i just feel like this movie you know they were trying to make a movie that they didn't have the budget for and it shows visually because they had to use so much stock <laughs> footage there's so much cheapness to it um like i didn't think the acting was overly bad I, th I think nowadays when you watch this film a lot of people would be super offended by the uh the indigenous character because it's played by a white dude it's no different than doing blackface i guess to a lot of people but um i don't know man I, I i didn't hate this movie by any means it just felt like a tv like a very very pg tv movie with a lot of missed opportunities you know you know what i mean I, yeah yeah I didn't and it also felt movie, like it but one thing it. i really did think was cool um and this is kind of like what this stood out to me is like this is the jaws ripoff it was um i like that they kind of had their like own take on like the moby dick story caked in like they do that, like as they also do in Jaws, where you have like this character who, like, it was like his obsession and is like almost like his like like arc and consumed by like just hunting down like this bear. Where you have the same thing like in in Jaws, and that's like kind of like the most captivating part about that movie to me, honestly. Um, so I did like that they typed in. I like that story, but they also don't you know have it the same way as they do in Jaws and in the actual book that like kind of poetically ties it all together right right but yeah i kind of I, I i agree with like a lot of the like the same things i i thought this movie was a slog this was a long 96 minutes <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean yeah it, it was tough because the transfer is so god awful too any dark scenes is just like yeah i'm sure i'm um, honestly if you watch it on a like a phone or a laptop it'd probably be better than a tv i watched, which it, on I watched it on a tv i watch it on my laptop i always watch the uh, youtube shit on my laptop because you know yeah. yeah you're gonna get that little better resolution it gets stretched out on yeah, tv like the no screen's way. smaller yeah yeah, yeah i, I probably should have did that because i couldn't see shit i mean it was still really dark but i mean it wasn't probably as pixelated and stuff so i mean it wasn't like the daytime scenes were fine it was just kind of a shame that like you didn't get to see the nighttime um it, it's it's shot man like there is some decent cinematography you can tell but they do like there's so much there's just so much other shit going on you don't really get to see the landscape as as much as you would like to because they're constantly showing stock footage and transitions and they're they're either flashing back or there's so many slow mo scenes in the film that like it takes up so much of, of the time you forget about like some of the actual you know cinematography that's in the film but i think this is definitely one of those films that <laughs> would just be so much better to watch with a good transfer because it's outdoor. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. Oh, you're missing curious. all the good shit. Who owns this? Yeah. Who it absolutely out? feels like a movie that would like just come out on Vince Vinegar syndrome. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, honestly, I know about it. <laughs> if they, if they put the, if any, if anybody put this out, I, I'd pick it up and watch it because I'd be curious to see how, they would you know transfer this off because actually this was released in 1978 in canada as grizzly 2. yeah that's what i said off the off the top oh did you say that sorry yeah, yeah i said you know somebody was going to benefit from making that you know that's like the italian thing to do right like zombie 2 was sequel to dawn of the dead so <clears throat> but yeah no it's it's totally unrelated totally unrelated so but all right um, um do you I guys don't really want to do ratings real quick? Yeah, I don't really. What else did this guy do? Not a whole nothing, lot. About nothing. He nothing. He the only other only movie ever directed. Crazy. Yeah, <laughs> he was. He did work on Pumpkinhead two and like 
um, Terra Mecha Godzilla. <laughs> oh, really? Terra, Terra Mecha Godzilla? Nice. <laughs> yeah, he's like an actor, I think. Oh, crazy. That's funny. It's probably an extra. <laughs> probably. Right. <laughs> uh, fuck, man. I mean, I, I will admit, though, like, oh, dude, the kids in this movie, man, the acting with the kids is so bad. It's like, it's cringe bad. Dude, it's so bad. Uh, if I ever came into a bunch of money, I would totally create a, a release label because um, there's so much stuff out there that still needs release. You can literally can never have enough of people releasing stuff. Um, it seems like this one, like whatever company owned this is like pretty much probably defunct now. So it probably wouldn't even be hard to get the rights. Can, am. Man, maybe it's like public domain now. It's possible. It's on YouTube. It's on the public domain, yeah. So, but I mean, the problem is, I mean, public domain is fine, but like, you still want to find the elements to this so you can actually transfer it properly. Yeah. Right? Like, you don't want to be taking no fucking VHS transfer and trying to, it just doesn't work. Yeah, it's one, you definitely have to get the the actual elements for this, but um, yeah, anyways, Tyler, uh, what do you rate this one? Yeah, I, I think this movie is very good. Uh, if you want to watch a Killer Bear movie, there's much better ones to watch. I'm going to give this one a 4 out of 10. Um, I'm going to come in at a 5.5 on this one. I didn't like hate this movie. I didn't think it was great and stuff. I I, I think it suffers from a lot of different things. Um, but uh, it just, you know, it has potential. I mean, it has its moments. But, you know, it feels, it, at times, it almost feels like... I it's weird because i'm watching this film and it has so much like stock footage used and like one of my all-time favorite directors is bruno matai he rips off everything and he uses tons of stock footage in his films but i have no problem with that it's so weird but in this instance i felt like it was just like it was it was so overdone that you had these ideas that could have been explored even more like bruno matai isn't a guy that's you know gonna write a crazy script and you're like oh well that's fucking amazing you know kind of thing it's more about how he does his films than the narratives and shit. But this one, I feel like just had the potential. That's why it gets a little bit lower for me. Cause I, I just think there could have been so much more here, but yeah, five and a half. All right, JP go. Yeah. Um, I, uh, this one, you know, I think a better release would definitely, um, help. And I could probably see myself got coming up on it. Um, but I think it's pretty like, you know, it's, it's pretty average from, from my point of view. So I'm going to go five. So I'm going to split between you two. Yeah, no, I think I'm going to go with a five too. I that's actually my original rating was a five out of ten too. So I, I I'm going to change it to five. Okay, my original I don't even know. was a four and a half, I, I, and I was like, you know what, fuck this movie. But we all agree that if we could see more, we might <laughs> we might like yeah yeah, yeah. like unironically, if vinegar syndrome put this out, I'd buy it just so I can see it cleaned up and shit my pants. Yeah, this is a total VSA. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because this is something you would have saw in the video store, but not anywhere else, really. Right. Yeah. Yeah, pr probably. Yeah, I mean, I mean, 100%. All right. So that is Claws from 1977. Prophecy. All right. So getting into the third and final film here tonight uh, from 1979 is Prophecy, um, directed by John Frankenheimer which uh pretty interesting that he did a film like this to be honest um i know tyler you're a big fan of frankenheimer right i love frankenheimer i'm wearing uh a, a second shirt right now that's pretty I awesome i didn't even know they made a second shirt <laughs> that's crazy yeah well that's a great movie man. i've seen a lot of his movies but i mean if you go through his filmography this one kind of sticks out like a sore thumb because it's so different than what he is usually directing so yeah he made a lot of action movies and kind of in dramas really right i've so, only watched i've only logged one out of his 54 so yeah. this is my seventh movie from him i think and i have like three more at home i haven't watched <laughs> yeah i've seen a few of his films I, I, i've seen seconds the manchurian candidate um what else have I seen? French Connection Train. 2. I've never seen Black Sunday I don't think before. I've seen any of these. I've seen The Challenge, which uh, actually Kino put that out. That's pretty That's pretty fun. 
Uh, it's, yeah. It was kind of a weird oddball film for him to do too. Fifty Two Pickup, I've never seen, but I know about that movie. Yeah, that movie's cool. It's just like just a neo noir with Roy Schneider. Oh yeah, and then Ronin, Birdman and then- from Alcatraz. I've seen that. I have that one on blue. I've never watched it. Oh yeah, the and Island Doctor Moreau. Um, I think I watched the um, Ronin when I was younger. Oh, I've Ronin seen Reindeer Ronin. Games. I yeah, watched. Da- I watched Ronin. Rain- Reindeer Games sucks. That was like an <laughs> old man. Get yeah, Ra- Reindeer Games is is so funny, man, because it was actually filmed in my in my home city here, and it was actually filmed at a place that I was. Well, one of the scenes was I used to work as a stock boy um, in a clothing store back in the late nineties, and uh, um, so they were filming. They transformed the shop that I worked into, like it was set at Christmas time for Reindeer Games and stuff. Like I actually got to meet Ben Affleck and uh, Charlie Theron. Um, I had my picture taken with him, but I actually lost that picture over time. So I guess it never happened, did it? Um, but it was kind of funny too, because like most people are always like, you know, Ben Affleck, you know, he's such a nice guy and, and Charlie Theron's such a bitch. I had the polar opposite experience with them because he, uh, she was super nice and he was being a dick that day. So it was kind of weird, but, <laughs> but anyways, yeah. Get, but did you get to meet Clarence Williams the third? Uh, no, I did not. And actually, um, uh, what's his name was in the film too. Um, Danny Gary- Trejo. Yeah, Danny Isaac Trejo. Hayes, my Ashley friend, Kutcher. my friend, my friend got to meet Danny Trejo. Actually, she used to work at at the gym. <laughs> Ron and, Jeremy. Yeah, so she worked at the gym, and he was working out there every day. And he said he was like the nicest fucking guy. He's I've heard nothing talk. but amazing things about Danny Trejo in real life, yeah. and it makes sense because he was like someone who like fell into acting, who was like a street guy. Yeah. And usually those people are the most humble. Yeah, man. Like he's done very, very well for himself. Danny Trejo saved um that actor Edward James almost life, apparently, because he made a movie about like gangs he would like was formerly affiliated with in the early nineties and portrayed him as like raping each other and shit that pissed a bunch of them off. And I guess there was like a hit on him and like Danny Trejo like went and like went back to his connections and like convinced them to not kill Edward James almost. Wow. Crazy. Man, I love I love Danny Trejo, bro. Definitely definitely like one of the my, the best Mexican actors ever. Oh dude, he's just so recognizable, man. His tattoos, everything about him, man. It's crazy. Yeah, he's just awesome, dude. He's got like, that I voice just too. Does, like so many levels yeah. of politics too, and I always respect people like that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, like awesome. Frankenheimer came off of like the island of Dr. Moreau and then which everybody knows the story with that. It's like a huge failure. I actually really like that version. I don't know. So I, I've I think never it's seen it, but uh, I've seen they, most of his good movies. And then he, he came off that movie and then he did Ronin, which is like a spectacular action film with crazy car chases with Robert. Yeah, I've seen that one. Like it's so crazy. And then he, and then he just shit the bed with reindeer games. It's like so fucking weird as filmography. <laughs> yeah, well, career, but. You got to consider like he started as, his career in the early sixties and what reindeer came oh. reindeer came out and what like 2000 the year yeah, 2000 another one i've seen is the iceman cometh i've seen that movie before i that's another one i had the movie's like four hours long so I'm yeah just it's it's a fucking marathon it. it's a fucking marathon dude yeah so yeah he's done a lot of really like big films man it's crazy so yeah so this one it just shocked me like it's just so out of the realm of things like i i'm assuming this was probably not like a passionate thing for him. Maybe it was like just he was hired on to do this. I, I don't really know what the story is with this. It just seems out of sorts for someone like Frankenheimer to do the type of film like this. But I mean, in reality, this isn't like your typical, like, you know, nature run amok type film. This is very politicized. Like this is, a, this is more of a drama than an yeah, actual I horror agree. film. Really this, this one solely, de- you know, is depicting. I wouldn't say that far, but I get what you're saying. <laughs> well, I mean, you don't, the first like bear action you get in the film is an hour into it. And we're dealing with environmentalists. We're dealing with um, like native Americans. Is it really them. an hour in the first There's time you 25 get bear minutes action? left. There's like, you get a little cheese with like the sleeping bag. But like, oh, um, you mean off screen? Yeah, it's off screen. Yeah, you don't yeah, see the monster like, until the end of the movie. Yeah, yeah but like dude, the the sleeping bag is like one of the best up. scenes in the entire film. The sleeping bag kill on the kid is probably one of the funniest scenes in cinema history yeah, because it's just absolutely that. so bonkers. It's so fucking bonkers. Like this this bear, this mutated bear shows up, and it literally swats this kid in the fucking sw- in a sleeping bag. 
and it hits a rock and fucking explodes literally there's feathers everywhere and you're just like oh my god that was a kid and it Dude, happens so quick shit. it's like it, it's, it's like so all of a sudden funny. you're in the scene and it's just like bam bam and you're like and I, I actually rewound it three or four times i started laughing so fucking hard i was like oh my i always forget how funny that scene is because it's that so just extreme that's all the flat like all it's all the feathers just like flying. yeah dude it's so extreme but that scene happens like like 57 minutes into the film because there's this huge setup in the film it's very um you know it's it's about environmentalists like the the natives are trying to protect their land because you know basically this logging company wants to come in and fucking tear down the forest and that's where they live right so it's oh, natural yeah. that they want to protect their land um which you know in theory i mean if you want to get real political about it like you know everyone here is is guests in their territory we're the ones that fucking raped and pillaged and stole their shit so anyways it's pretty much what the setup is like this guy's called in this is environmentalist to see if it's like you know okay for this you know he, he need, basically needs to assess what's going on over there and stuff but he soon realizes like he's out there fishing one day and he sees like this ginormous fucking fish and he's like holy shit what the hell is this and then one thing leads to another and, and uh you know the source of um what's happening out there with the native people and being sick and you know they, they were getting sick and they were having a lot of stillborn babies die and and uh you know he soon realizes that uh that one of the uh the um logging companies that uh is basically polluting the waters it's actually Merc a paper mill paper mill yeah so the, the yeah the paper mill yeah and um <laughs> but it actually you know to go back to the beginning of the movie yeah um because you have uh you have like the search and rescue people who are killed but then you go to the you, when you're introduced to the main character like that's that part where they're talking about the bait the 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 housing and like the landlords and the rats eating, biting the babies and stuff. I'm like, damn, this is yeah. fucked up. But it reminded yeah. me of like, it always reminded me of that opening scene of Dawn of the Dead, like where just these right. like slumlord, like housing units that just fucking, you know, um, that these people are, are basically stuck in. Um, and, uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Cause it sort of sets up like the, the, you know this is a very political film obviously but i think that it does it pretty well it handles it pretty well too um, well they show they, they, yeah i mean they show one contrast in the beginning about you know you know typical and despicable fucking landlords and stuff like that it's you know essentially the bottom line is the dollar they don't give a shit about the living the quality of living in there the, as long as they're collecting their paychecks and stuff like that right which mm -hmm. pay, which kind of plays into like how the government you know it, the contrast is the government in the in this aspect like you know i mean and you know, like all the political people that are involved in stuff like this like they know that what's going on like these people know what's going on and stuff and i mean the consensus was that they're getting at in this film is that they knew what they were doing because you know the natives are very protective of their lands and stuff like that they that they were polluting the water on purpose Th this has been a, like a you know conspiracy quote unquote for years and years about wiping out the native people by doing things like this right because they knew like that they weren't going to win this battle against them and stuff like that so how do you get rid of them how do you how do you win the battle you kill them off smallpox you, you pour you, yeah you get exactly so you poison <laughs> the water because you know they're living off the land they're eating the fish so poison the fish and then they eat the fish they get mercury poison they die that was their plan i mean i think that's what they were you know essentially getting at in the film was like this there was a purpose to their to their madness it wasn't oh we're just you know using mercury on our fucking logs and stuff like that which is complete horseshit because we all know the reason why uh these paper mills fucking soak their logs is to soften them up to make the pulp you don't need fucking mercury to do that shit it was the, the agenda was to kill the native americans right that's exactly well, what they're trying to do they here say that it's for um to get rid of fungus yeah it's but but that's that's their excuse it's bullshit it's, yeah. it's complete yeah. bullshit you don't need to do that and, and the, the 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 agenda here was to kill off the natives because they're gonna fight they're gonna fight to till they're i mean look at the scene at the barricade <laughs> the, the guy chainsaw. was literally willing to take a chainsaw <laughs> to the throat then let them through that fucking gate because that was his entire livelihood you know what was left of his people and stuff like that and you know there's some really there's some really damaging and uh you know there, some really sad scenes in the film like you know like the old you know the chief and stuff 
that scene where they they pan down oh, and the they cigarette. see the cigarette man where he can't feel it because the mercury is taken is taken over his body and stuff he's lost it's attacked his nervous system to the point where he doesn't even notice that the cigarette is burning between his fingers and stuff like that like it's it's so sad yeah. to see that and shit like it, man dude it's fucking brutal man and like it's just so savage because we all know about all these government conspiracies and you know america and canada it's the same shit but that's one of them with killing off the natives and stuff and that's kind of what they're doing here and it it kind of hits home because i live i live in an area where you know i see a lot of this every single day too you know with the natives trying to protect their lands and stuff like that and it's a lot different up here um i think you guys haven't given up in as much as we have up here uh with the battle and stuff like that but it's it just kind of never i don't want to say given in but you know what i mean it's just a lot different up here um but i don't want to get too political with it because i really don't get involved with this type of stuff but uh, I think essentially in the, in this film is what they're depicting is, you know, the contrast with government and, and knowing what they're doing, you know, the bottom line is, is, is the dollar. Yeah. They don't care about it, human it, life and aspect, like in the ghettos. The are like exploiting the lower class. Um, exactly. Like I mean, we all know like, the ghettos like, were built because white I'm people, okay with exactly. White people built fucking ghettos and you know, that's, you know, and it, that, it, that depicts it right there. And then, you know, on the flip side with the natives and stuff. And yeah, I think it's, it's got a lot of powerful political statements and a lot of social commentary in the film and stuff like that. So, you know, to me, it's like, it's kind of like the tale of two genres. It's like, it's this huge political, um, drama slash like nature run amok because mm -hmm. of the atrocities that man commits. The yeah. bullshit that man that man does like th that should have never have happened. I mean, this could possibly have, and this has happened with pollution and stuff like that. Like these big corporations, they don't give a fuck. You know, it, it, it's all down the line. People are being paid off. They know what's going on in these situations. They know the water's being polluted, but they don't fucking care because the end of the end of the day, everyone's making so much fucking money. What's a hu huge? Um, what's a few human lives? They don't give a fuck. It's sad. Shit's real, man. It's real. Honestly, they could have even done a little bit more with the um like the the effects of the mercury. Like I, the the bullfrog was really cool. The or sorry, the tadpole. Yeah, it's really like cool. the size of like a fucking huge fish. Yeah, like it I like how the story slowly like unravels with like uh oh like the the plants, the plants, the raccoon, the tadpole hmm. and then you get um a sam like the giant salmon and stuff um but then like at the then you finally see like the fucking bear and it's like this giant jelly bear <laughs> it's fucking nuts dude no oh sorry yeah. i was coughing <clears throat> um yeah no but like uh, no 100 100 100 man like dude it's just like it's so savage when when they find the fucking cubs and they and that was the most effective part to me dude because like the one native girl is like you know, let it die let it die but then you know he's saying no this is this is the evidence that's gonna you know you know when you know when help you guys win the battle kind of thing and then she realized she's like you're right like we're being poisoned here and but just, like that whole uh, scene is just like holy fuck, dude but it but there's a the crazy sound contrast. they made that thing make is haunting <sighs> it's I know. so unsettling it's just like, I, so sad yeah dude it's so sad and like there's a major major like contrast in there too because like they do this so well and they do it so subtle and then you think about it and you're like oh shit, totally but there's a scene where our environmentalist is out fishing and he sees that big oversized salmon he's like what the fuck is this but he catches that big fish they go back and eat it and then we and then it's revealed after that the water's been all poisoned with mercury and stuff like that and but we know from the beginning of the film that um rocky's wife <laughs> is uh pregnant yeah full, full circle man full circle oh yeah because so that whole thing's interesting too yeah that's the thing. All yeah that's a that. really good scene like when they realize like what's going on and she kind of has a breakdown yeah and then it plays yeah. into the end of the film there's a really powerful scene where you know after she said like i'm pregnant and like and now now i'm you know i've poisoned our baby with this mercury which is probably not entirely true if you eat one mercury ridded fish i don't think you're gonna fucking i don't think it's gonna affect you too too much but anyways the point is they're trying to make um but there's a really powerful scene in the towards the end of the film where you know they've they've revealed all this information we know she's pregnant it's probably compromised um we know what's going on with everything 
and we see her holding the mutated bear that scene just haunts me man because it's it's like a prelude to like what she possibly is going to be dealing with in the future with her own baby so yeah. it comes full circle and it affects everybody right that, i mean that's kind of the point like you know you're not you're not safe from all this bullshit, all this money hungry fucking um you know shit that the government's doing and stuff and it's just it's 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 actually a really good story you know it, it this movie is is a drama disguised as a horror film <laughs> like it's, you know what it's, this movie like honestly this movie is like a lot better than i remembered it because it's been probably like 10 years since i've watched it last you know what but you know what it is though jp is because we watch these films with a different eye when i first saw this movie way back in the day i didn't catch any of this shit man i'm watching this now going holy fuck this movie's super 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 yeah it's actually like pretty well written yeah i i felt like this had the best story easily oh dude that we watched you know it's an incredible story because it touches on so many different elements right and i'm just like wow man like i mean they take it right from the ghetto to like you know all this type of stuff and i'm like man it's really well done dude it, i think it's excellent i think it's a really really good film and like it's savage too like i think that the dude that plays um well it's it's a guy in a costume basically who plays the mutated bear in this but I, apparently I, I read somewhere like it, it's a dude that's like seven feet tall like he's a fucking mammoth he's like that's he's that's been a, fucking huge he's like a, he should have been a basketball player but that, that's cool casting to, to actually cast somebody so big because when you see those scenes like he looks fucking huge <laughs> like that's cool so i thought that was pretty cool but i thought the effects on you know that they that they made for the bears and shit were really effective the sound design was was amazing um yeah and of course it looks beautiful because this movie was shot where i live like well it's shot southern bc um again and I, I I didn't know I was watching the film and I'm like man I know this is BC where is this shot this looks like southern BC now I think it was shot in um I can't remember where the fuck it was anyways somewhere down south but again this is where I live it's where I, li- I live in the shit so I am bragging I'm bragging BC is one of the most beautiful places <laughs> I think it was shot in Crofton actually I go through Crofton actually quite often um but anyways yeah beautiful cinematography you know that the acting in the film is is brilliant and stuff and it just got such yeah, a there core. Was, there was a lot of really good chemistry i think between the two leads and it really carried the movie like when you kind of were building to like that last like half hour yeah and one thing i i do respect is when you're going to use real natives in your film too you don't hire italian americans to play natives <laughs> like uh well, that one guy was the was the counselor from um little darlings I haven't seen Little Darlings. Which guy? The the main? Um, the main native, like the main, like the younger guy. Yeah, yeah, the guy that was willing to take the chainsaw to the throat to protect. Yeah, his, that guy was the camp counselor, like that got involved with like the girl at uh, Little right. Darlings. Right, right. What's his name? Something Asante. You know what's a really fucked up scene in this film is <laughs> when yeah. when they really realize that there's something seriously wrong in the forest with the raccoon. It's like all wigging out on the on the deck, and it yeah, like attacks just them. Throws it in the fire. Fucking throws it in the fire. <laughs> Dude, that shit's so fucking funny too, man. I'm like, what the fuck? He just like threw that shit in the fire. But I mean, really, at that moment, what are you gonna do? Because raccoons, honestly, man, I don't know if you guys have you guys probably have raccoons, but like they're oh, you've got tons of fucking raccoons. Dude, they're oh, vicious. Tra- raccoons it's- are fucking vicious, man. Like you don't want to fuck with a raccoon, man. They'll fuck you up. I actually no, have a minor fear of raccoons. Um, actually, I live I live in central BC, so we don't they, they actually don't uh, migrate up here. It's a little bit too cold up here for them. But down in like Vancouver and shit, like they're fucking everywhere, man. Like you see, oh, dude, and they're always like fucking. You know, they're always just they're just nasty shits man annoying yeah so um i like to call them trash pandas (laughs) trash (laughs) pandas all right um what i like the end of the the end of the film is pretty funny too actually like just when you think it's over it's not over and then actually one of the the funniest scenes i'm surprised we never got a sequel but i liked it here i i just can't believe like how funny the scene is when the environmental is like the bear is down and he does this like huge tarzan jump to get down there <laughs> it's fucking so funny to me and he's like fighting this fucking oh my god it's ridiculous oh man it's pretty funny i will say like the third act i mean it like i said it's like the tale of two movies man it's so like there's so much commentary happening and then you get like i mean i wouldn't say ridiculous but i mean 
I guess if you had a mutated bear, maybe that's what it would look like. I doubt it, but <laughs> it looks I like it, it looks like it's covered in jelly, bro. <laughs> it does actually. It's a nasty know. looking thing, but I think it's it's effective, man, because it's you know proven it's making a statement, right? It's you know look how fucked up this thing is. So yeah, it's good stuff though. It's good stuff. Um, solid film, man. Like honestly, this is probably my favorite watch. I actually watched this. When Screen Factory put out the Blu-ray a couple years back, and I think it was a couple years ago, yeah, and I don't remember what I rated, but I was definitely a lot lower then. But it's it's amazing when you watch these movies with a critical eye how much different you see films. That's what I love about doing like podcasts and stuff because like I can watch films one way and then I have, and when I'm forced to watch them a different way, I just see yeah, either it goes up or down. Sometimes you watch a film you're like oh i love that and then you you critically watch a film and you're like oh shit that thing actually fucking sucks you know what i mean oh i've been there <laughs> and it's amazing like how it happens like you know for like i, I always use the the pet cemetery 2 thing as an example because like i always used to say i love this movie it's great jp and jeremy were like that movie fucking sucks we review it i fucking hated the movie and they both liked it go fucking figure like where how does that happen <laughs> you know it's critical it, it's watching shit crit I, I have no idea how jeremy ever liked that movie because he hated everything so it makes no fucking sense to me but anyways i, I think I, we brought up jeremy a lot on the show today it's strange <laughs> um but uh yeah so i mean you guys have anything else on prophecy i mean i feel like we could it's one of those films i mean you could really talk about the ins and outs of all the political stuff I, I really like don't want to talk about it a good bit. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like I, I'm done with that. Like, I don't want to get too deep into it because, like, you know, me with politics it's just like, is like, it it's like oil and water. It doesn't mix. Of like, just like telling this story of just like corruption, which is it's not like it's not like it's reinventing the wheel the theme, but it's yeah. a theme I like and it's really done well here. And I think it's smart how they really kind of do hold it till the end. I like, like that sleeping back. It was just like, it's such a nice little tease. And then when you finally get to like you, you before you finally get to see like this bear, like go ape shit, you right. like, you get this scene with like the Cubs and you like, you know, it's coming. And like they, that scene is like, so was so effective to me. Right. It, it, and it really used, it used the strengths of having like a good director, like Frankenheimer, like really guiding this movie correctly. And have good chemistry between the leads. Lots of good character actors in this movie. It's just it's a really solid, uh, really solid movie. I like how the bear like is like a symbol for like the anger of everybody too. Like, he's the product of you know the corruption and the and you know the and they, even the bear is like they really they tie in like some of the native folklore into it, which is cool. I like it anytime. I like folklore like stories. Anything right. to do with that. Yeah, and then, like I said before, with you know, with the natives and uh, and bear folklore and stuff, it's a huge thing. Like they have a lot of different stories. There's a lot of different folklore with bears and stuff. So it, it makes sense that two of these three films had like like native folklore in them because it completely makes sense to me. You know? Yeah, for sure. So I mean that that's cool. I just like I said, it, like in Claude's, I wish they had a, like made that the core part of the narrative. You know what I mean? But this yeah, one it works. Like most absent in that one. Yeah, it does. It's there, but it's like, man, you just like wanted more. Like it would have worked a lot better as that type of thing. I, that movie's confusing to me. It honestly is confusing. Um, just, they can't all be winners. No, they can't. I mean, it's not like the worst thing in the world, but like, you know, it's kind of funny. You watch Grizzly, which is just like a bloody good time, you know, not really taken not really that serious and stuff. And then you watch Claws and you're kind of confused by the whole fucking thing. And then you watch this one and it's like super fucking serious, even though it's like mutated bears and stuff. But the way they do it is yeah. just like, it's like it's it, not it's, done in like a campy way like you would expect to move no it's, it's to be done it's it, it's hard to it, it's, it's hard to like to promote this film as being like a serious killer bear film because people would be like, like what the fuck are you talking about but i'm like dude <laughs> there's a total underline there's a there's a core narrative here that's like super serious and shit like that and it's you know the bear plays into it but you know it's again it's not really about a killer bear it's more about the other parts you know what i mean so yeah and that's what i like about it man i mean you don't have to do i mean i, I don't get me wrong like I, I like some fucking campy ass you know 
nature on a muck films I, i'm not gonna lie like if there's no narrative at all and there's a there's a crocodile walking around fucking walking around <laughs> croc walking around a croc fucking running around and fucking eating people all film i'll be fine with that as long as it's practical i don't care but but i'm fine with this too to a point i mean it's something i couldn't watch every day because you know me and politics is like i i just i get so angry about shit man yeah. i've always had that rage against the machine man like i don't know man i just get super pissy about it. that's why i keep my mouth shut when it comes to politics i try not to like over... i've learned to just shut the fuck up yeah like i have my i have my i have my opinions and stuff but like a lot of that opinion stays in this house between me and my wife and shit like i just I don't fucking I don't go out there and, and talk like I just don't like those conversations. I really don't. It ain't I like to have fun it. in life. People get too upset. It's way too upset, man. Like the things that you never bring up at a party while you have fucking 15 beers in you, never bring up religion and politics because it'll end in someone's fucking face getting busted open every single fucking time. <laughs> I live with hillbillies, man, and uh, these hillbillies don't fuck around, dude. <laughs> dude. Like, man. Oh, man. I mean, you see people with fucking like Confederate flags around here, man. It's crazy. That makes literally no sense to me. Yeah, well, yeah, because they're super north. <laughs> Dude, it makes no how how the fuck could you have a yeah. competitor in Canada? It makes no fucking sense. You probably would seem if you went like you are from the south, man. You west and the sticks nothing to do. But like with, if you go up, like yeah, you see a bunch of like New Hampshire and Vermont. It's like, that's there, right. There's a good bit of Confederate flags around here too. But in Canada, though, man, it makes sense for yeah, I mean, it makes kind of no, weird. It makes yeah, more yeah, sense in the U.S. Like, even if you are from like a northern state or whatever. I mean, it's still because you might have had people that moved up there and they're still you know they're part of that whatever. It makes yeah. sense. But in Canada, what? That was a, <laughs> that was an American Civil War thing, man. Like, come on, bro. Yeah. These people are fucking confused. <laughs> but again, you know, like I always I always say, like American politics and american american general is like it you know it goes hand in hand with canada because american politics yeah. affect canada so much and that that's why there's so many like you know hardcore trump supporters up here and stuff like that too and you know it's just because like it goes hand in hand like it really does i don't care like we're separated by a fucking invisible line but we're still yeah. very similar so yeah canada is definitely like an extension of the u.s oh, it always time. felt like to me I mean, I always try to tell people, people are like, oh, Canada, you know, a boot and a, but I'm like, man, Canada is just like the US, man. We should just combine to be one big country. Not everybody can, like, not every part of Canada talks like that either. Well, no, because no, Can no, Can no, Moods doesn't talk like Canada like, is like, just like, most parts of Canada I don't, don't think you could like really that. tell Moods is Canadian based on his dialect. Like, if you didn't no. know he was, Canada, like, there's, there's certain there's certain words that he says that are slightly different than what you would hear in the u.s but well the way but the pronunciation is he he's pretty much exactly like u.s but that but that's the thing about like canadians and americans like you know from state to state everyone has different accents has different yeah, dialects and stuff yeah. well that's like canada too man you go from like the you go you know from the far east coast newfoundland i can't even understand newfoundlanders i don't think anybody can actually i don't think newfoundlanders can understand newfoundlanders to be honest but like the further west you go the less kind of like noticeable accents and things you have but like it's like in america like if you're in california and to like you know boston like it's such a big difference right like yeah. even in when i was in colorado like when i was in you know i'm like holy shit, dude like y'all just be talking so different than north or south dakota here and then i'm in arizona and like everyone's talking so yeah, different i mean it, it really is weird like even like i think we i've said this before but like pennsylvania the yeah. west side of pennsylvania for the to the east side is completely different in terms of yeah like accents yeah and that's what i try to explain to people i'm like just depending on where you're from like there you know i got family that lives in southern ontario you know toronto that area and they and they they speak so like i always they, I, i'm always like you guys are the most typical typical canadians man because you like you they you know the yeah, I, I Canadian think accent is like from, from that, that area. toronto ontario area have like more of the thicker like i feel like i can notice it right away that's yeah. where the boots come from yeah, yeah they say a boot a lot and i always bug like my brother-in-law about that i'm like what'd you just say and he's like shut the fuck up man and like <laughs> a and stuff oh yeah, yeah. a saying a is a big east eastern um can, uh, canadian thing man that's a huge thing over there man like there's sometimes like you'll be talking to people and they're saying it like every second word it's like what the fuck, man yeah it's oh, so man. bizarre to I, me. it's I'll so bizarre forget it it took me everything to not bust out laughing but i was coming this was probably like eight years ago i was coming back from canada with a bunch of people so we like we stopped at duty free on the on the border obviously and like the alcohol there's like astronomically cheaper 
in like the United States. So we like between the four or five of us, we spent a couple hundred dollars on alcohol. So <laughs> the guy at the border was like, Oh, you got receipts for what you got? And I hand him over like this giant receipt and he go he just goes, Oof, that's a lot of alcohol, eh? <laughs> it took a lot of these that's our busting out laughing. That guy that guy just got off the set of a Bill and Doug movie. <laughs> that's a lot of old eh? <laughs> Fucking amazing, man. Uh, that's good shit, man. Good shit. Um anyways, uh back to what were we talking about? Here we go again. Tangents. Um Prophecy, 1979. Yeah, um, I think this movie is really it's really good, man. Um you know, like I said, it's not something, I mean, if I'm going to watch one of the movies more, I'm probably going to throw in Grizzly more than this one, but I, I think this movie's way better. I think I actually like it a lot more for what it is, but um, I'm going to come in at a nine out of 10 on Prophecy. Wow. I think it's, I think it's for what it is. It is a really, really solid film. Um, it does a lot, man. It's it's very powerful, man. If you actually like, you know, understand what you're watching, kind of thing. There's a lot of different angles here. There's a lot of shit going on in this film. Um, yeah, it's it's a drama, in my opinion, with with some mutated bears. So it's good. Um, JP, you're up. Um, yeah. So uh, I like prophecy quite a bit um i've always liked it even the first time i seen it but as like an adult and like more intelligent now than i was 10 years ago i feel like i understand a lot more what the film was going for so i also think that it's a pretty pretty decent um in terms of like ecological horror um environmental stuff that you get post jaws um although on the surface it might just look like sort of a rip off um you know trash i think it i think it the guy elevated what he was what elevated it from just another um ripoff film so uh i'm gonna come in at eight on prophecy tyler yeah i think this one's a gem um if you haven't seen it definitely check this one out um it's not really the typical Frankenheimer movie, but I don't I don't think it's really like a sore spot or an oddball like in his filmography. Uh, you definitely still see um, his strength, like the, the, his strengths as director in this film. Uh, yeah, I really liked it. I'll, I'll definitely pick up the, the Screen Factory when uh, when and if it comes out, it comes down on our at a reasonable. Yeah, it's price. way too much money. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah. But yeah, I'm not I'm not I'm not as high as you guys, but I liked it a lot. Um, I definitely watched this movie again. I'm glad I finally saw it. I've known about this for a while. I'll give it a seven. Yeah, I think that I think the opening scene in this film I actually forgot to mention was kind of the was kind of the uh yeah, I, I, I docked it a little bit because I feel like the the cinematography in the opening scene with the with the search and rescue people and stuff was so hard to figure out what the fuck was going on at first. Like it was a little bit dark, but you're like, what the fuck is going on? Like you don't even know what they're tailing or nothing. And all of a sudden this like dog jumps over the fucking edge. And like, I mean, I guess it's all leading up to like an attack and stuff like that too. But it's, it's hard to figure I When I watched this one a couple years ago, I remember rewinding it going, Oh, okay. That's what's going on. Like I didn't even realize what it just kind of picks up. And you guys know what I'm talking about? Do you have the same? Mm -hmm. Or maybe, maybe I, wasn't like paying attention. I wasn't paying attention. To yeah. What I was, said. Oh, the opening scene in the film. What the fuck are you here for? God, he's like disappearing every two fucking minutes. What, you got to go sign for some shit again? Um, I'm no, sick, the, the opening scene where it starts out, it's really dark, kind of shaky cam and yeah. stuff. And, and, and like all these searchers are, they're, you know, they're running through the woods. Search like, and rescue hey, people, yeah. Yeah, and like this dog goes over the edge, blah, blah, blah. And like, and then all of a sudden it ends up in like super carnage. Like everyone's fucking dead by the end of this. <laughs> but at first you're like, what the hell is going on? Like you don't even know what they're tailing it, but it's, I guess it's just, yeah, you don't know what the hell's going on. It's just yeah. building the mystery. Yeah. Yeah. But obviously it was about because some people went missing. So they're looking for him, but yeah, the dogs were going crazy because they could smell the bear, which is ridiculous. And I think they can smell the jelly on the bear. They can smell the jelly. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, it, but it is kind of ridiculous in a sense because like, like when bears or when dogs get sense of bears, man, they don't go after them, man. They don't bear dogs. Don't attack bears like it's it's very fucking hell no 
<laughs> a, a, a bear is like a giant fucking million times size dog. Yeah, but dog, but dogs will attack things are bigger. Like they're they're a stupid animal in, in general because like a lot of animals like out in the wild, like they they know their limits. Like they won't attack bigger things, right? Yeah. Um, but like dogs, like they have this weird thing with bears. Like they they get a sense of bear. They ain't going fucking near it, man. They yeah. ain't running. Well, after I think it also because it looks like a giant fucking dog a little yeah. bit. I mean, you know essentially, I mean? I mean, you think through, you know, evolution and stuff like that. I mean, they had to have come from, I mean, a lot of dogs look like bears. Right? Yeah. Like, like whenever you think of like, all right, like lions or cats that are yeah. really big, like yeah, bears are the closest thing to giant dogs. You well, they, know I, I mean? think they actually do stem. They come from the same type of family branch, right? Probably. Yeah. So, but yeah, it makes a little bit of sense. So I did uh, see a video when I was a kid one time of two pit bulls fighting a bear. Wow. Yeah, pit bulls yeah. are a different breed. A real, like, a real video. And I was like, holy shit. But it wasn't like a bit it wasn't like a like a full grown bear. It was like yeah. a it was like twice the size of the pit bull, maybe. Yeah, if you're fighting like a like a three year old um black bear or something like that, it, it'll be big, but it won't be that huge. Right. You ever seen Khabib will be... wrestle a bear? No. <laughs> you never seen that video of Khabib uh Khabib Nurmagomedov, former UFC light no. lightweight champion? Uh, when he's a child in Russia, in Dagestan, he's it's him and his brother like wrestling a baby bear, like, like doing like double leg takedowns and shit. It's crazy. <laughs> his dad Russia. recorded them f- literally wrestling a real bear. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's, it's like bigger than them. That is just <laughs> like, that is just messed up. Look it up, dude. It's crazy. <laughs> that's the ultimate training in life, right? That, that's the ultimate fucking Russian. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit that's crazy wow um (laughs) all right so uh yeah that is going to conclude episode 255 zoology volume four um what do we got going on next week i um so i was actually going to talk to you guys about that but um we could talk about it off air um okay okay, let's say well what's what's next show then because i can see where this is going well, I didn't. I that's what I want to talk to you guys about about the next show. Okay, is it that? Uh... Yeah, because the one we I know the one we had lined up, we kind of had it in mind, like as if this was going to be the show before 2011. So it was like a short show. So we were going to do um, Carnival of Souls next week, but I think that we should pivot and do an Irish show next week. If you oh, guys want. Oh. I see what you're saying. And then sw- and then do the OG the following week, just basically s- switch. Because oh, uh, we, we did want to do an Irish show again, volume two. So I feel like March is like the best time to do it. What did we do yeah. for the first one? I can't remember. Um, we did uh, Hollow. Right. Good film. Or no, was it Hollow? No, we did Isolation. That's a good film. <laughs> I have no um, idea. I can't remember. But I figure we could each pick a Irish film. Did we do Grabbers? Did we do Grabbers no. last time? Oh, no. Okay, so we got to do I'm, Grabbers is my pick, man. That was my pick, fucker. <laughs> oh, son of a bitch. Like, no, you can pick it. You can pick it. No, it's fine. I mean, I whatever. There's, I mean, if, if you're going to pick it, if we're going to yeah, do, do we'll, it. We'll I'll, probably do Irish Horror next week just because it, it lines up right. Irish? I think we should. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine with me. Um, Okay, so it's going to be an Irish Horror Volume Dukes. <laughs> Yep. volume two um that's cool man i guess i'll have to get on the uh the good old interwebs and do some googling for irish films first um, of all so the to- films we did on on uh the first irish horror was isolation byzantium and the canal oh three good films man that's a good show yeah i love the canal man that's a creepy fucking yeah movie. i like that movie yeah, I like all three of those movies. Yeah, that was that. That's a good show, man. It probably did really pretty terrible because we liked all the movies. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, Irish shit, man. I'm gonna have to do some. How to confirm know. something? I kind of have a. Oh, damn it! He made an import. He made it's a British movie. <laughs> all right, so yeah, the, we'll probably do that next week, and then um, we'll push Carnival of Souls back a week, but um yeah and then maybe we'll do like a franchise or something it's been a while i do want to redo the phantasm franchise tell you that 
Yeah, we should probably do maybe. What are some smaller ones that we haven't got into? Like, I don't want to do like a fucking um, cube. Oh yeah, I guess there was a fourth one, right? There's a remake to that. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot uh, about that house franchise. Did we? Oh yeah, okay. Oh yeah, we never. Oh, house would be fun. Yeah. Shit, there's only four movies. Yeah. Hmm. Well, you know what just came out actually was a Toxic Avenger. 4k set yeah but the new Ooh. one isn't out yet so uh, kind of want to wait right. for that dude that's something we got to consider doing man soon is um round roundup up shows man because we have so many yeah <laughs> there's a lot um, so many all right well let's uh let's do let's let's uh figure out our irish films and we'll be back next week with a irish special it's been a while it's been episode 131 was the first volume of irish horror i like these fucking these themed out like exploitation and exploitation and what is it irish exploitation no i don't know <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean man i, I like yeah. these, type of sh- these, yeah, these yeah. shows no like it's always cool to do like location based stuff yeah location that's a better word for it right yeah country of yeah okay so yeah uh irish horror will be we don't know what we're doing yet we'll probably figure this out off air and then uh yeah that'll be next week's show cool i'm stoked for that and Please. um i guess that's everything we're out of here man episode 255 zoology 4 done check you guys next week and deuces peace Folks.